gonna post all of these and all of the socials. One, two, three. Yeah. Or post and refresh to see if it comes up here. Oh my god, scary. Pull this up here so I can see. <laughs> Hi! Wow, there's already people here. Whoa, holy crap, that was so fast. So fast, there's already people here. Hi, everyone. I started early today because I wanted to um, get a lot of work done. I, let me see what's on the screen. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure what's on the screen is actually what I want to have on the screen. Um, but anyway, hi. I uh, am starting early today because I've got... It's your birthday today! Happy birthday, Bee Pine! That's... I'm actually a little touched that you came. Also, hello, Shrink Rays. Um, I'm starting a little early today because I have two tasks to get done tonight, and they're both line art. And line art is usually, like, one of the longer parts of the process, although it's very, like, relaxing for me at the same time. That's an 18 brush. I need a 20. Um, and since it's going to take a little longer, I wanted to get as much of a head start as I could. Plus, I was just ready to start streaming already. Um, so I figured if I'm already ready and I have a lot to do, I can start a few minutes early and no one will mind. Hello, everybody. Wow. Thank you, everyone, for adult core. See, it's the opposite compared to Forest because Forest, I... <laughs> He always leaves it right up till the last minute to start streaming, and it scares me so bad, because I'm not, like, I, I don't want to say I, I'm afraid of being late, because that's not true. I think fashionable lateness is okay in some situations, but when it comes to, like, uh, streaming or, like, any kind of performance stuff, I'm, like, uh, so, like, terrified to be late or not be on time. Um... Same with, like, my job. Like, I could never show up late for work or I would be, like, beside myself. I always was scared because, you know, I thought I was being over, like, over dramatic. But then one of our co-workers that always told me, like, oh, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. Uh, he got fired for it. So I was like, oh, hmm. I guess I wasn't crazy for being paranoid about this. Um, to be fair, though, I think they fired him unfairly. They just used that as a way to fire him. <laughs> Who are you adding, Farsor? Thank you! My character design is kind of just like me, but chibi. I actually, not on this file, but like on another sketchpad file that I've lost somewhere in my computer, I'm sure I'll find someday, I just drew, like, explaining how I chibi-fied ele elements of myself, because not and there's nothing wrong with it i'm used to like vtubers not looking very much like the people that they're based off of because i think it's more like they play a character um which that degree of separation is probably like pretty smart i can't lie i'm just i hate to say i'm autistic i can't really play a character um because that's not really true i can act but like if i was supposed to be doing that for like three hours on stream while also drawing, and it just seems like a lot to be focusing on, so I kind of just designed my VTuber after myself, and, like, chibi-fied versions, like, elements of my appearance, so they're easier. VTuber model was so far off from what I look like. See, that's the thing that I think is really interesting, actually, is that, like, when given the chance to make, like, a fantasy version of yourself, some people will go for, like, themselves maybe with a few things changed or they'll go like as close to as honest as possible but then other people will be like no i want to be something completely different like i want to do i don't want to look like myself at all or like not even because that sounds negative not like i don't want to look my, like myself it's more like they're trying to explore a new like a brand new person like i have to be myself all day anyway so why not take this chance to be something new and i think that's cool i don't I can't say I do that much. I think because even like fantasy versions of myself become explorations of like aspects that I maybe don't get to express in the real world, they they still always wind up being me. It's just like me with a few things shaved off or added on, or like 
like a, it's like a Smash character recolor, but in terms of like aspects of my personality or like what I look like. My Sona used to just look like me too. The instant I accepted that they didn't have to, well, <laughs> is there a reason for drawing your PNG tuber in a different style than you normally do? Uh, I'm gonna be completely honest. It was a com like it was a experiment. Like I was just doodling, and I was like, "Wow, this looks really good, and it's super clean and simple. I could totally use this as a VTuber if I wanted to." Uh, so I did, because like, why go through all the hard work of m drawing something brand new if you've already drawn something that works? Besides, I actually really liked it. I was trying to, so I drew it linelessly to begin with, and then I actually painted the lines on top of the art. Whereas I typically do line art like this. So I think that doing a full piece like the style of my VTuber would be pretty difficult because I would have to know exactly where I was going to put the lines as I was blocking out the colors. Um, but for like individual characters, it worked just fine. So I've been I've thought about doing like stickers and stuff in that style because I, while I think my own art style works well for stickers, sometimes I think that like if you can do something that looks very like soft and simple, it will come out much better. But then I also find that really striking art styles with like clean lines and like very like high contrast colors look good for stickers too. So there's there's no real right answer. We I was inspired to work because of you. Oh, Will, I also finally published my webcomic. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I'm so proud. Is it like, so is it long standing? Are you working on it currently? Or is it like a one shot or... Like, what's the deal? Because I there's a whole bunch of different kinds of comics that you can make. You revamped it. Oh. Sona is always a bat, but sometimes they change slightly. Mostly just how I draw the eyes. I'm going to be so honest. I love bat furries, but I can't draw them. I have a bat character, but I just... Like, I keep trying new ways to draw them, and they always just look like kind of cats with wings. Which I guess bats kind of are. Uh... My one art mutual, Harper, who is decaf bat on uh, Tumblr, I love her art so much. She's been, like, I've been studying how she draws bats because she manages to draw them all very, like, unique and individual while still, like, very distinctly looking like bats. So I'm, I've am i been looking at her art and being like, how do I do this? I need to figure out how to, what she's doing. That's what, What's she cooking with? What ingredients? Oh yeah, I love Harper's art. I've I've been following her for like a while now, but we only started talking like I want to say a few months ago. But I'm really glad that I did. I think it was like something so random too. I just like sent her a DM and I was like, "Hey, this looks like you would like it." And then we started talking about the anime that was her icon or her header, and then started talking about anime in general. I think the most recent thing that we talked about was that she posted Yatsuba's dad is gay. And I said, really? Because I believed her. And she was like, no, I'm just making shit up. And I was like, oh, well, to be fair, you could have lied. And I would have believed it because Yatsuba's dad, I mean, I, it's been years since I've read Yatsuba. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the one with the little girl with the pigtails who, hold on, I can like, I think I can speed draw her because I've been a Yatsuba fan since like I could think. She looks like... No. Okay, there we go. And she's... Yep. This is like my, all my faces currently. You can probably see the artistic inspiration. Um, but then she's got like these pigtails that come off the side of her head because Yatsuba means four leaf. So she's like a four leaf clover. Um, the Yatsuba veins go deep into my soul. So this this is the character, the main character of the story who's like a little baby. She's like, Yatsuba's dad has something going on. I'm gonna be so honest, when I was a kid I wanted to look like Yatsuba's dad and now I do, so I win, actually. I win at life. Um, but Yatsuba is like a comic about a single dad raising his daughter, uh, and the only like adult character that I think I remember the dad really interacting with other than just like his neighbors was his best friend whose name is Jumbo and when you see the two of them together I guess there's also that one like co-worker guy he doesn't like and I have seen people draw them as like evil toxic gays and it's like okay this is Yatsuba we're talking about but all right um but Jumbo and Yatsuba's dad look just like 
any random gay couple that you would see on the street, and it's really funny. I know they're not. They're literally just guy best friends, but who... I'm like Atlas holding up the world, shipping all men with their best friends, because that's that's just me. Me when I date my best friend, and then we are now three years together. Are you ever going to make thoughts? Oh, okay, so fun fact, the reason that I'm drawing this is because this is going to be the YouTube th thumbnail for the VODs. Like, I have the video from last stream, um, but I didn't just want to, like, upload a screenshot because, one, not very good, it's not very eye-grabbing. Like, if you're trying to get people to be like, hey, come watch my YouTube video, and your YouTube thumbnail is, like, just a screenshot of the stream, it's, like, some people might watch, but you want to make it look as enticing as possible. And since it's an art stream, I'm making art for the thumbnail. Um, so that's what this is going to be, is just, like, the, the VOD thumbnail on YouTube so that when people miss it, they can come watch it. Um, which is something Willow Chat, should I promote my comic? I just did the first episode, but you know. Yeah, go ahead! I honestly, if- I hate to say it this way, if- while some people don't like, uh, like, links or anything in the chat, and typically I'm not, like, a huge fan of links if- because, you know, you never know what they're leading to. If there's ever an artist that needs to, like, promote their work, please do so in chat. I- I always want people to both find their audience and also find other artists. Because I think that, like, finding artists to speak to and, like, to be inspired by is an invaluable part of the internet. It's actually one of my favorite parts, and so I would never want to hinder that from happening. I guess if you were, like, linking your entire gallery worth of art one at a time, I would be like, okay, chill your role, man. Like, we can- <laughs> you can do that, but you could also just send it as a whole gallery link. Thank you, I'm a digital artist of 10 years. That's so cool! But yes, please. I, I always want people to share. I'm like, I don't find any, like, reason to put a barrier to do so. <laughs> My boyfriend is sending me TikToks. Honey, I'm live. I can't watch those. Holy mother of pearl. The TikTok got so many views so quickly. Sorry, I... <laughs> I never post, uh, like, promo TikToks. I get really embarrassed doing it because I don't know how to advertise myself to TikTok. I know how to post art and I can answer questions, uh, but I do begin to feel my age when I see people's, like, super well-edited fancy videos on TikTok and I'm just sitting here like, well, I have a phone camera and I've got some pictures that I would like to show and that's it. And so I just kind of go with whatever I can record. Thank you. Oh, wait, I didn't see the webcomic link. I have to open that so I can see later. And also, Shrink Rays, you should make a proper art blog. I know it's nice to be private, but what I do is I keep one... One... Sorry, I'm trying to open the webtoon so I can read it later. I have, like, art that I keep... To be honest, I was kind of expecting to see more of, about your pirate OCs. Oh, here? Um, I can't say too much. Alright, sorry, I have like three threads of thought going on. One, Shrink Race, you should make an art account and be picky about what you share with people, but it never hurts to have a public one so that people can see your art, and then you can decide what you keep private. That's what I do. I have a lot of art that goes unposted, not because it's like anything bad, just because like it's like entirely self-indulgent, and while most people don't mean anything of it, I do get a little sketched out sometimes seeing people, like, tag personal art as like, oh my god, this is so me, or like, no way, this is I'm this picture, and it's like, well, you're not, but I understand it's nice for people to be able to reflect and see themselves in art, so I want to give them the space to do that where I'm also comfortable to receive it. So there's nothing wrong with keeping some of your artwork private. Um, two, the pirate OCs. The only reason that I haven't been posting as much about the pirate characters is because I've been shifting focus to work on Laika's Comet and another comic that is in the works, but also because the pirate comic is not... it is standalone, but it is related to other works that are currently ongoing, so it's not likely that Jack in the World Sea will see the light of day for a few years. Um, I of course like to continue to draw my characters, and I have drawn Jack and Loot and the rest of the crew on my own time, but because a lot of it is the development for a larger story, I can't 
post it because it's spoilers. So while showing Blackbeard and uh, Blackbeard and Cottontail off, <laughs> yeah, I can't t keep too much of a secret. It is the Office Workers comic. That really all started as a gag, uh, half gag, half like my friends and I were kind of lamenting over the fact that we. So I like reading any gay comics at all, really. I can't say that I favor any, like, specifically uh, women or men, but typically speaking, I prefer Yuri because I just think that Yuri is usually more entertaining and the characters are usually a little better done. Um, not all of them. There are definitely the select trashy Yuri, and I think that those are fun too. Uh, but I definitely prefer that over, like, BL or anything. Um... Especially because just I'm 25. I don't want to read boys love. I'm an adult. I would rather read about adult characters. But that was actually what my friend and I were lamenting over is that like so much because of the demographic that they're typically aimed at, which is fine that it exists like young, like young gay kids need stuff to read. But because of that, um, I don't see as many adult characters in both like Yuri or BL. Um, so we were like, well, if we had to write our own, like, Yuri, or, like, what would we write? Like, what where would the setting be? And I'm always like, well, I want to turn the most boring setting into, like, the funniest thing possible. Because I love, I love the trans transformation of the mundane. <laughs> BL is the genre of middle-aged men. I mean, is it? Because every single time someone's been like, you have to read this BL, it's like two vampire boys with skateboards and they look like uh i saw the one that everyone was talking the few people were talking about and the artist used to be like a skate infinity artist and i was like not in a bad way and i i say this very lovingly but i can tell i know that you drew those two boys because i can see them in the artwork um and it's just not my thing like i wasn't really interested we should have more middle-aged men, Yaoi. Popping in to lurk and say, yes, gay guy stories that are about teens, and I'm not really interested in teens at this point. When I want those stories to exist for teenagers that do want to read them, so I'm not saying, like, they shouldn't. I'm just like, you know, gay, you stay gay into adulthood. Or most people do. And so it would be cool if there were some stories about gay adults. Especially because I think that, like, and this is a whole thing. Uh, with heavy disclaimers, this is not true for everyone. But like, I find that when people talk about escapism, it also comes with like a heavy dose of wishing to return to youth or like wishing to return. Oh, thank you for the sub, Robbies. I think I said it. Oh, gifted a sub. That's so cool. Thank you. That's so sweet of you. Sorry, I want to take a chance to want to have a take take a chance to thank people, but I don't want to lose my my, my topic. Um. So, I think that there is nothing wrong with escapism. I actually am, well, maybe not just escapism. There's nothing wrong with fantasy. I think that it's important for people to be able to indulge in things that comfort them, especially in the world that we're in right now. But I do think that you like everything. Like, in the same way that, yes, sugar, you can be allowed to eat desserts sometimes, and like, it's good to indulge in things, you should also reflect on what those indulgences mean about you, and maybe try to dissect them a little bit, because it might bring up things that you're either, like, unaware of, and that could be cool, because you can have revelations about yourself, but also some things that you might need to challenge. And so, like, for me, like, a positive example was for me when I was a kid, and Oh my god, I'm being drowned. No. Well, hey, I have water and coffee, so I can drink both. Mm. When I was a kid, before I had the word for being trans or really understood what that was about, I would very often, like, roleplay as a genderless character or, like, something had happened to my character so that their gender could not be cis. Again, even though I didn't know what being trans was, I over and over again would pretend to be characters that had strange genders or species transformations for whatever reason. It was just something I was really interested in. And obviously, the reflection that came with that and time was realizing that I was trans. But 
in the same vein, I think that people who indulge in fantasy a lot where they're younger or like that it's specifically about their younger selves instead of the people that they are now should wonder like why it is that they feel like the person they are now isn't worth exploring stories about. Now, not that all fantasy when you're younger is a bad thing because I write stories about being like a Pokemon trainer with my boyfriend and the reason for that is because other than one or two close friends, I had a pretty lonely childhood. So we, and so did he. And so when we were talking about Pokemon when we first started dating, I always thought, man, I wish we had gotten the chance to grow up together because you would have been my best friend. Like I would have loved to know someone like you earlier and I'm grateful I know you now, but it would have been nice to have you when I needed you earlier. And so that's kind of what that st like little character exploration is. Are you double jointed in your fingers? Am did I do something? Help? Did I draw the fingers funny? That's just how I hold my pencils. Like it's like the feeling of wanting and wishing to know someone before you met them. Oh yeah, that's well honestly that's a lot of what my stories are is like exploring the what if we met sooner what if we met later what if we what if we were different what if we were different people entirely would we still find each other and would we still like the person the people that we are and i think that in that way uh, someone asked the question i responded privately someone asked if all of the couples that i make are secretly just me and my boyfriend but like in au's and i did giggle a little bit because sometimes it's intentional, like sometimes I am just making self-inserts, but other times it's not at all. It's just that I think I'm so familiar with the love that we have that to imagine one that doesn't at least resemble the shape of it is like, it's almost alien. I can do romances that are similar to my friends, but I think to write something intimately and understand it from the inside, you have to experience it too. And that's how I feel about my relationship with him and the characters I make. And, uh, sorry, I saw a tips for art block. Okay, my tips for art block would be, I have to think about this. Also, sorry, I just heard the door open, so I know that my boyfriend's home, and I'm anticipating a Freddy Fazbear jump scare. Um, you got me to make so many trainer sonas. See, I have my one trainer sona who like grows up, but I was like, I want to make other kinds of Pokemon trainers because while I know what I like, I can also make themed teams really well. So I want to make OCs based off of those themes. And that's what my uh, Diamond and Pearl and eventually my Platinum team are. I did draw the teams that they use, but I also have like the designs for the trainer kids that I doodled on Twitter. And I, I think they're really cute. I honestly want to draw another piece of them sometime. Uh, yes, Ra, God, your rant, the art block is burnout under a different name. Like, I had kind of had that thought myself, but ne was never able to like put it into words. So when you said it, I was like, no, you're so right. Like, I'm so glad to hear someone else say it. Where do your... What are your fingers on? Where's the fingies? Hello. Oh no. And this is your remind. Ah, this is your reminder, everyone, to label your layers. Um, so a few things with art block, right? To have art block for six consecutive months tells me that there might be something else going on in your life that's not like allowing you to have the time to recharge mentally in order to do art the way that you know you should. Sometimes it is just as simple as starting and drawing bad and accepting that you're going to draw badly. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I was waiting to start a tangent before you walked in because I didn't want to get jump scared. You can now press the summon boyfriend button if you want to because he is here. I'm actually... Yes. Yeah, I can't. I can't make cookies though. I saw your note. No! Well, we only have freezer butter, so mm. it just has to dethaw, and then... And then I can make cookies. Oh my god, everyone's hitting summon boyfriend. What are the cats up to? Snoozing. They're they are sleeping. They are asleep and just knocked the hell out right behind me. And it's funny because when Forest streams, Harbor is a little devil. Like, he goes crazy. But when I stream, Harbor's like, I sleep. I rest. Um. I mean, can't, can you defrost the butter in the microwave? Oh, oh my god, his ass. I just turn around, Harper's butt is in my face. He's watching. 
He's got um, I not straight from Frozen, but I have. <laughs> Everyone's summoning farce like a free ten gacha pool. I have um the oven turned on and it's by it's like on top of the oven. Oh so. wait, so you're going to make them? Yes. Oh, I thought you said you couldn't. I'm so happy now. That's why I wailed when you said you couldn't. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't imme immediately make them. He got oatmeal chocolate chip cookies, and I'm very happy. And double chocolate chip. And you want to guess what um, I just got over at the house? You got more? Yeah. What did you get? She gave me just a regular thing of chocolate chip. Oh, mix. hell yes. <laughs> sorry. I, I like the oatmeal chocolate Ow! chip, but I is he biting? Yes, he is biting. Naughty. Where? What layer is the lag? Also, I'm talking about art block. Ooh, ooh, I can bring up, and you have to do your art lesson tonight, Forrest. Um, oh my god, what layer? There we go, oh, thank god. I'm just gonna merge all of these layers after I clean that up so that I never have to do this again. That's, that's kind of what these are, is just like consecutive merging of layers. Um, okay, now I can mention it. <laughs> Harbor was biting Forrest. Forrest was not biting me, don't worry. <laughs> um, so... Sorry, I'm trying to get back on track where I was drawing. So, Forrest, does Photoshop not have a shortcut that makes you select the layer you're drawing on? I'm sure it does, and you can shame me for this, but there are Photoshop, like, tools that I straight up have not learned for years of using the program. like. So when when I was in college, um, someone I knew was like watching me draw. And when I was in college and I used to do line art, I would like line the entire piece and then color it. And then I would go back and then manually draw over the lines to change the colors without like layer lock or anything like that. And they were watching me and they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm coloring the line art. And they were like, that's how you color your line art? No wonder it takes you like five hours to do a simple PNG. And I was like, well, that's kind of harsh. And they were like, dude, no, like, I'm just trying to save you time. Like you can lock the layers and then you don't have to do that. Um, and I didn't learn that until I was 21. So yeah, no, my, I found that the more I've been doing art, uh, the more I've learned about the program, but I definitely learn it a little slower than most people do. Not because I don't have these questions, but because I just assume that the tool doesn't exist and then don't look any further into it, like some kind of buffoon. Uh, but I'm learning. I'm getting better. It's everyone's reminder to use browned butter in your cookies if you can. It is divine. Interesting. 1,000 apples. I've done that before. The brown butter. What is brown butter? The brown butter. Like you caramelize it? So you put it in a pan and you put it over low heat and essentially you're browning the butter fat. Interesting. So it just, it, it's supposed to give things that you use brown butter in a, it's a richer flavor. At some point. We're gonna have to get you and use your mic, and I'm gonna make you a PNG tuber so that when you talk, they can have the separate guys talking. I thought that would be cute. You brown butter. Listen, I don't know how to. I don't know how to do a lot of things. I'm still learning to make omelets personally, so that was a little out of my field of like knowledge. I'm not the cook in the relationship. I would say I'm the baker, but I'm a baker in the sense that I, like, stick to what I know and follow recipes very directly. I love instructions. Smiling. I'm an omelet hater! No! Control, shift, click. Mmm... Not doing anything for me, but it is moving the layer, so that's, that's new. Um, also, Ra, at some point we can call and I can go through all the shortcuts with you because then I can learn. It's a start, yes. I cannot eat eggs unless they are in rice or another yummy dish. I do put eggs on rice a lot. I'm- see, how do you eat such aesthetically pleasing meals? Me? I only eat them because I- well, one, if Forrest uh, likes them. Well, yeah, autism too. I actually- 
I, I've never said this on social media because I'm scared uh, for be, to be clocked as being a little more autistic than I let on, um, but sometimes I'll eat foods of only one color for like a day or multiple days in a row. Like I'll only eat green foods or I'll only eat yellow foods. I've never told you this, um, but not, I don't know why. I just feel like I kind of have to. Like one day I'm like, all right, green day. And then we just start eating green food all day. Um, but also because I think if food doesn't look pretty, I don't want to eat it. Cause like it has to have the visual appeal too. I am not uh, like it, <laughs> I'm picky, but not like I don't eat a lot of food cause I eat way more than I used to. It's more just like if food is not satisfying or doesn't taste good or doesn't look good, I just won't eat. Cause I would like, it's like, why would I? I would rather not eat if it's not going to be good food. Um, but I think that's because I'm a little spoiled. I've had, I've had food shortages before and I've had to eat really crappy food, sometimes not even eat food. So I think now that I've had it security for so long, I'm like now getting that you started dating me. Now that I've started dating someone that cooks too, like that's, that's a big part of the problem is that because Forrest cooks so well, um, when we go eat like someone else's cooking, it's just so, it's like mediocre in comparison and I'm always sad. Also, they never use enough seasoning. Like that's the biggest one is that when Forrest, and Forrest doesn't even use like a crap load of spices or anything. He just knows what ones to use. So when I eat someone's cooking and it's bland, I'm just like, this is sad. All you need to do is use garlic and paprika as a bare minimum, salt and pepper. <laughs> that Can shit goes on anything. So Azulili, you said, can I do how I draw tutorials? And I would be very happy to. I like making tutorials. The only thing is I just need a specific question because I draw a lot and I draw a lot of things. So I would need a question on like a specific topic and I can start from there. That is a good segue into my next topic though, that you wanna know how I draw furries. Uh, the only problem with that is that that's also a pretty broad topic because there's a thousand, one hundred billion, million animals in the entire world and I love drawing them. Um, I can tell you that Forrest has been asking me to teach him how to draw and start like with fundamentals. And so because of that, once every day for 30 minutes we do a sketchbook together. <laughs> like a design breakdown forehead. I can do that. That's actually really easy to do. Hold on, I got my sketch pad up. I can hide you. This is actually pretty much done too, which is great. That was like one of the big things I wanted to get done tonight was this line art. I might do swat the color swatches later, but this is a pretty good start for right now. All right, so back to this. Um, before I do the Leica though, oh, this is so out of left field. Feel free to ignore it. But if you can say, if you could say hi to my partner Tracker, I'd be grateful. <laughs> Aw, well hello Tracker and hello Doxaline Alien. I think I said Doxaline, right? Um The the Pokemon studies. Pokemon studies. Forrest was an artist in high school and he stopped doing art for college because he went to college for something other than art. Technically, I also went to college for something other than art, but I'm insane. And also I love art, so if I didn't have it, I think I would go crazy. Um so because of that, he has asked me if I can help him relearn how to draw. And because uh, autism, I am helping him relearn how to draw by doing art lessons with Pokemon. Because while it seems kind of obvious when you say it out loud, most people don't notice it, but Pokemon are designed to be easy for kids to draw. But specifically, like, there are some designs that are made for to be easy for kids to draw, and then there are others that are a little more complex. But you can basically make, like, a breakdown fundamentals of, like, how to draw anything using Pokemon. Specifically, like, um, we started with Growlithe, because Growlithe is Forrest's favorite Pokemon, and that was... My asking him to draw Growlithe was essentially so I could, like, measure where he was at uh, form-wise, his ability to come up with concepts without a reference, because I first asked him to draw Growlithe with no reference, then I said, okay, now you can draw it with a reference, and then for the last drawings, I said, now come up with new poses not like ones that you see online, but you can draw these with a reference too. 
And from that, I gained that he has a really good ability to recreate things that he sees, but he doesn't have a lot of like mental space uh recreation awareness and he struggles to like well he doesn't actually he thinks he struggles to come up with things on his own but i think it's because he lacks confidence in what he's making so we i'm starting with like basic forms um so Growlithe was the first that we did when we were finished with Growlithe. I moved on to doing spherical Pokemon because one of the first things that we did in my art basics classes was we had to learn how to draw like basic shapes and the teacher would bring out like a bunch of wood blocks of different shapes and then we would have to do like still lives of these blocks as accurately in terms of measurement and proportion as possible. And when I was doing that, it seemed like torturous. Like, I was like, why are you having us draw wood blocks over and over and over again? But what I realized after I did that is that my sight measurement became so much better and I was able to understand dimension and proportion. So in doing so, I'm trying to recreate that with Pokemon that have very dimensional designs and the easiest and probably best to start with are spherical Pokemon, like Sfeel. Because while Sfeel is just a circle and you could argue, oh, it's not that hard to draw, it is in the sense that you have to remember the proportions of where all of the objects are on its body that is a sphere. So when we first started drawing Sfeel, I had him draw Sfeel from memory, then I had him draw it from the references, and then I asked him to turn Sfeel around in two different angles so that he, I could see how he would place the ears and the eyes in different positions. Um, I think that he did one where it was like looking down at the person, if I can get it right. I actually think I need to move the ears a little farther back. <laughs> yeah, I did do that. Because he was doing one where it was like staring down in the same way that like cats do when they look down at you from their perch. Um, <laughs> circles are hard as fuck to draw. I do feel like circles can be unforgiving, but one thing that you should always remember is that it's okay to draw them imperfect as long as they look good. Like, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, it just has to feel like a good circle. Sometimes, and this is this is part of the reason I don't use shape tools, sometimes the circles that feel the best are the ones that aren't perfect circles. Um, especially if you're drawing, like, characters. Characters are very rarely, like, perfect anything, perfect shapes, perfect circles. So you actually might want to do that without the shape tools. See, like, this is like if Sfeel was, like, sitting on a glass table and looking down at you from above. This is actually a little more of an intense angle than what he drew, but I think it's funny, so I'm keeping it. Anyway, after we did Sfeel, um, I did an exercise that I actually did in my character design class when, well, it was like my character design and animation class. The teacher passed around a piece of paper and told us all to draw blobs, either peanuts or like circles, but they all had to be like slightly different. So we obviously passed around the paper and all did our own like little doodles here. And he was like, you can give it some dimension, but don't go too crazy. Like try to make sure that it's readable as a sphere or like as a little potato circle. And after this was done, he said, okay, now I want you to draw features on this on this little circle here, and I want you to turn these shapes into the emotions of the character. And it was sort of like our first exercise in gestures, uh, which is like, sorry, not, not, not this, not gestures, gestures. I can't say it because I can't get the T-U sound good. Um, and by that I mean, we had to practice recreating emotion with very simple shapes and like get the point across without having super complex designs. But the thing is, the fundamentals of these shapes translate even into designs that aren't circles or aren't like little peanuts. Um, <laughs> this one is funny, this is not my best one. So I had him do this with Meryl where we both drew like these little peanut shapes and then we would turn them into Merrells of various emotions. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm having fun with this exercise again. Um, but the reason that Meryl works so well for this is because Meryl looks so silly and it's got that really like kind of funny tail, so the expressions work good. And I kept killing him. Yeah, Farce kept killing him. He kept smushing Meryl. Um, I made Meryl shocked or like horrified a lot. I think that there's something fun about the squishy designs, and I love drawing like faces of like disgust or horror. Uh, they're a little bit they're a little bit cheatsy because those are like the most ex like intense expressions, but I think they're fun. Um, so this was this was his most recent day. When did you start drawing? What inspired you to keep drawing? I have been drawing longer than I could talk, actually. One of the things- I didn't develop speech too late for a kid, but like one of the autistic diagnostic criteria that I had was that I uh, didn't talk until very late. Um, but part of that was that I learned to draw really early, and I love to draw to communicate, and I still do. So that's been pretty much my entire life that I was at least like sentient. But what inspired me to keep drawing was that I love to, I just like the act of creating images and stories. I'm a big story guy. Um, and so it's hard for me to like imagine a life where I am not drawing because I probably would do it even if it wasn't my job. Sorry, now I'm drawing pathetic potato chip Meryl. floating down a river peacefully, flattened. <laughs> the Merrills are very fun. I really like this exercise. I love drawing characters looking kind of disgusted. It's really funny. I'll be like, isn't this guy so cute? The grumpiest thing you've ever seen. Very real. Very, very real. I've kind of been doing this with Roselia, but the roses keep tripping me up. How would you recommend getting around that? Um, a rose is a very simple shape. It's a half, it's like a cup, and then you have these parts that come out, and then you have to do the surface of the rose. But remember, it's not going to be like a perfect plain surface because it's made up of petals. Then you do the outside petals, and then the inside is just squiggles. And then you can do like one little petal here, and that's a rose. It's, it's probably the easiest flower to draw. Uh, I also say if you ever need help with a rose, look at the side of a cut up onion. And it'll look kind of like that, just a little bit more peeled. Do you think that drawing Pokemon is a good way to improve an art? There's a lot of different types of them. Yes, actually, hugely great way to improve an art, solely because there are so many different kinds. And while I'm biased for sure, if you ever want to learn to draw different things, but you don't want to step too far out of your comfort zone, like you haven't drawn something like that before, then Pokemon's a great place to start because the amount of detail that you put into art of Pokemon is all determined by you. Like there's some Pokemon art that essentially looks like this, like where it's just Wooper and it's like smiling Wooper and he's standing and he's got his little foot and then that's it. And then there's like art of Wooper where he's like fully rendered, shaded, like beautiful lighting. He's in water, there's like sun dipples and everything. Like it is, with all art, it is up to you, but Pokemon's complexities are really nice for, they're forgiving to artists that maybe don't have a strong leg to stand on, and they give them a little bit of like a push into the new and the frightening because they're familiar. At least for me, it might not be that way for everyone. Um, I like that my detailed blooper was just like slightly more cartoony. Anyway, the next task for tonight that I have to get done is I have to line this, and this is a commission piece, so, uh, ooh, there we go. To drag this down. This is for another uh, VTuber, and I've had this on a lot of these commissions I've had from before when we moved, and I didn't want to draw them. I hate to say while I was depressed, but you know, a lot happened. So I was trying not to get into these and make crappy art when I knew I wasn't going to be doing the best that I could. Um, but now that I've really got like locked into an art routine, it feels nice to be able to present these to people as I'm finishing them up or getting started on them because they're like, oh my gosh, this looks so good. And 
they I get to hear them be like, oh, it was so worth the wait. I'm like, oh, thank God. I thought you were gonna like kill me and string me up by my toes or something. Oh, the style for the ref is so cute. I think so too. Shrink rays. It's like how you were saying that the block exercises were kind of boring, even if they helped. With Pokemon, it's more interesting. No, exactly, exactly, exactly. And that's actually something that I wish, sometimes I do wish I could be like an art teacher for kids or just anyone in general, really. I think that it's so important to make exercises and training fun. It's like, it's like exercise in real life. If you, adults and kids both love to play and they like to play games. And so if you make running exercises just like go run five laps of course people are gonna get bored but if you tell people to play tag they're gonna wind up running like a lot like that was something that i remember thinking about in school was in middle school and high school you have to do like lap running but i would have much rather just like played tag with people and i would have had so much fun doing it so when it comes to art, it is important to learn the fundamentals. I believe that wholeheartedly. Like, my art did transform into something completely different after I started learning the fundamentals both on my own and through education with, like, teachers in school. But I think that there are ways to personalize them, especially if you don't have the ability to have, like, a formal art education or you don't have, like, the chance to have, like, a little snippet of one kind of like I did. So... I don't, like, you don't have to kill yourself, is kind of what I'm saying. Like, don't feel like in order to learn something new, you have to, like, be miserable while doing it. Rob Crooks. What I do when drawing Pokemon is that I research what kinds of animals or concept the Pokemon were inspired by, and I go based on their anatomy. I recently drew a Bidoof, and I researched beaver anatomy for it. It's a good stretch out of your comfort zone. You can do whatever you want for forever, of course, but drawing Pokemon as cats or dogs... Yes, that's huge! Drawing just cat, dog, Pokemon over and over again, if you need to try new things, is not going to start to push you out of there. Actually, one of the things that I started to do to learn like different uh, anatomy and shapes and stuff was I started drawing a lot of bird Pokemon, because I did not used to be able to draw wings. Um, this was back in high school, too. Like, I, I was like... I had made a, or wanted to make a comic where like the main characters were angels or like angel adjacent, but I came to the head of like, oh, I don't know how to draw wings very well. I think it was like while I was watching Rio or something, I was like, oh, how they do wings. I want to do wings like that. And so I started doing like a bird Phantom of the Opera AU where all of the main characters were birds so that I could practice drawing more like, uh, emotional or like expressive wing shapes and then it just turned into me drawing a bunch of bird pokemon over and over again and it worked really well and like now i think i can draw wings like half decent um but it's all just about finding something that you want to draw inside of what you know you need to learn to draw if that makes sense and then there are going to be some things that are like annoying like you got to do sheets of hands every once in a while you got to do your gesture warm-ups but you can turn those into something fun pheasant of the opera actually i made him a crow i made well specifically i made eric a red wing blackbird because red wing blackbirds are songbirds but they look like crows they i think they might be members of the corvidae family but i'm not sure um i'm not good with that part i just know birds because my dad would like point to birds and be like that's a that's a yellow finch a goldfinch and i'd be like that's so cool i'm 11 <laughs> and then I'm in 11 so, so shut, shut the fuck up so i have like all of these bird names and looks in my brain but i don't know anything about them i love how you've gone with, <laughs> with the clover motif everywhere uh i that's all thanks to Leica. i made Leica's character design and then i was like damn this is gonna be a formative design for the whole rest of my life or at least for a while and then it started working with the rest of what i had already made also, plus, I just, I like clovers, and I'm Irish, so it works. Um, I was, for a while there, when I was, the way you erase things is kind of fucked up. Help, Nick, what do you mean by that? I'm scared. <laughs> I, is it because I, like, do it scribbly, or do I just not make it, I don't know. <laughs> like I mentioned, I love Leica. Oh, I was going to start drawing her on another thing. I am going to keep doing the line art for a little bit, and then I might go do the Leica design breakdown like Ra asked for. Um, I mean, 
Well, and also for a breakdown, do you mean like how I designed her? Because I would say that the like she quite literally came to me in a vision, but I can break down the elements of her design and like <laughs> what I kept. Small eraser scribbling all over the erase. I love the little brush. He colors the same way. Don't expose me. <laughs> I, I didn't, I don't anymore. I now select blocks of color. I will need to grab you for a commission. The way you draw my freak frogs and species. Well, hey, I actually, part of doing streams was so that I could start chewing through the bigger commissions. But the other part of it was that I was going to offer to take commissions from people during streams and then stream me working on them. Um, so that you could bypass that, like, big sheet thing. I mean, I'll still probably have a form. I hate to say it this way, but I don't want someone to, like, see the, oh, cool, stream commissions, and then come in and commission, like, sonic fart explosion artwork or something like that, <laughs> and then have to be like, well, they paid for it. No offense if you enjoy... Well, no, Sonic's a child. But, like, you know, if you're into something like that that's not of Sonic, that's fine. No shame, but just not here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That was the first, cut, like, string of words that came to mind. And I was just like... The the things that you would see on the front page of DeviantArt, the, the white bread, or the... the the bread guy. Quote, some offense, in fact. Some offense, in fact. <laughs> Um, no, the Wonder Bread guy, that's who I was thinking of. Um, God, did, listen, I keep my nose out of things that don't involve me, but did you guys see the has-been hotel, $50,000 self-insert animation that someone commissioned? Because that's been living in my head, went, rent, went free, went free, uh, rent free. <laughs> yes, okay, cool. I was hoping that some people had seen it. I will explain it so that if you haven't seen it, uh, you don't have to, like, go hunting down for it. Sorry, I really like when people rip it off and put in, like, their characters. It's so funny. And I think it's really funny. I've thought about doing it, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so, TLDR, s some guy that did, like, the epic rap battles animations, I think it was, um who was not a great person to my understanding like he was apparently really homophobic and transphobic commissioned an animation a self and here's the other thing i need to do a disclaimer for it nothing wrong with shipping yourself with a fictional character we all have things that we like to do and i think that it's some most of the time it's really sweet when people do it they just see themselves and they're like that is like a kind of person i'd like to date and i think that that's cute this, on the other hand, this guy wanted, he commissioned an animation of himself with Charlie per, from, ha oh, it wasn't no C, it was him. He commissioned a music video of himself, like him, his self-insert, with Charlie from Hasbin Hotel, the main character, like, white blonde girl from Hasbin Hotel. And it was, like, a music video of her, like, kidnapping him and bringing him to hell and then chasing him, and then just the most mediocre cutaway from a adult interaction gag I have ever seen in my life, which in itself is like, okay, whatever. The video is a little, it's a little bit cringy. Yes, and Charlie is also a lesbian. That's the part of it that was like, I don't draw on an iPad. No, I draw on my laptop. Um, I wish the song didn't go as hard as it does. So I saw on, on TikTok... Wait, come closer so they can hear. Okay, I will have to yell. Um, sorry, but I saw the girl on TikTok. She actually started getting royalty checks because of how much people were streaming the song as a result of him doing this music video. That's hilarious. No, she was jamming out to it, and she's just like, oh, why, why are people streaming my music? Why am I suddenly getting, like, money? And then she looked it up, uh, like, as she was recording it, and she stopped dancing, she was just like, oh... <laughs> <laughs> but yes the 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 kicker here is that the commission was fifty thousand dollars and it made the guy bankrupt and it was like the animation was okay some of it was just straight up traced from has been hotel like the show but you know fifty thousand dollars for a self-insert animation that then bankrupts you is it's it's a little I won't say much else other than the Wonder Bread guy even thought it was excessive. And that's saying something. Oh, also, I saw somebody ask if you had any drag queen or gang characters. I actually don't think I do. 
but not because I don't want one, just because I haven't ever written a setting where, like, there, like, I guess the, oh my god, I can't, you know why I can't name that other office worker Charlie? Mm. I already have a Charlie. Yeah. I have too many girls named Charlie. I'm just obsessed with the name Charlie for girls, which is why it makes me so mad that there's one in Aspen Hotel. Um, but anyway, the only setting I could see that like I would have a drag king or queen character would be like the story with Charlie and Pepper. Um, but I haven't like touched that very much other than just thinking about them to daydream for fun. More Charlies enter the Charlieverse. Oh, I'm gonna start the cookies too. Thank you. I'm excited for cookies. But anyway, to answer whoever it was that asked that, I don't, but not because I won't. Just because I haven't had a setting yet that I would put one in. Since Laika's Comet, I can't get like too far into the lore for Laika's Comet, but do I like the name Lindsay? I'm neutral on it. It's alright. It's an alright name. It reminds me of Lindsay McGuire, but that's just because I'm old. Um, Laika's Comet is technically a post-apocalypse, but not really. It. I would say it's more just like the fall of like the way that we understand society as it is now. So there are things that they do have in the Laika's Comet universe, which is Firth A, that we do have now, but there's other things that are not present, and I won't go any further than that. Um, it's not that there couldn't be a drag king or drag queen character in it, it's just I don't think they think very much about that kind of thing. They're, most people are doing other stuff, but performance arts probably still exist, and some people have made like magician characters already, so there's no reason that someone couldn't make one. Is it difficult to manage art across multiple Tumblr accounts? Kind of? Um, Sorry, I'm not old. Sorry, I know, 25 isn't old. I actually don't even feel old, so when people call me that, I kind of get, like, skeeved out. But li I think specifically Lindsay McGuire feels old, so I have to give a little disclaimer with that. Um, to the Tumblr account question, though, no, because I manage my social media accounts like it's a job. Like, I literally, every single day, I have a little sticky note of things that I need to do, and I log in for, they, I literally set a timer. I work on social media for one hour. And if I go, if there's anything else that like must get done that I can't finish in an hour, I will finish it and then log out. And then I go, if I use it at all for the rest of the day, it's my personal account, uh, like my personal Tumblr, or it's my uh, personal TikTok that has literally 20 followers because uh, I need peace. <laughs> And I can't be I can't be clocked in all all the time. And since then, no, it's been perfectly beautiful using social media because I I just have to do lists. How do you manage art and a work form? Every time I try, it breaks me. Um, I have work art and then I have fun art, and I don't make myself do more work art than I need to because while there is always something to do, if you work so if you work yourself basically until you can't work anymore you will burn out and then you will have art block that was part of the conversation ra and i had was that like not setting limiters for yourself is how you work yourself to the point of hating artwork and i can't hate art because i love it too much it doesn't mean i'm not capable of hating artwork it means that i don't want to let myself because i've done it a few times where like I would work myself so hard and do so much commercial work or like commission work that I just couldn't even stand to do stuff for fun. Um, and you also have to designate times to draw just for yourself. Like it can't all just be for product and for like stuff to sell people. Remember you talking about the other furries like Blackbeard and Cottontail had their own? Oh yeah, there are three, okay, notes pad. There are three firths. Gotta go bigger. No, and I need to... Okay. Three. So, there's Laika's Comet Firth. Um, which is... I've been calling it Firth A. And which letter they are rotates, but it's like... Because Laika's Comet was the first that was conceived, it's Firth A. Then there's uh, Jack in the World Sea. Gotta write this out. It's a long title. And then this is Firth B. And then 
the Firth that's like the most like our real life planet Earth, like the only difference is that furries are the species on this Firth, this is Firth C. This is basically a Firth where nothing happens, like there's no comet, there's no magic, nothing. It's just regular furry people and so, like slice of life stuff happens in I have a few shorts that are like planned for Firth C. Um but really what Firth C is is like anytime I want to make a furry story that's not magic, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever, it goes here because I don't want to write only fantasy sci-fi stories. Sometimes I want to write stories about real living breathing people and just make them furries. <laughs> so that's what Firth C is for. The other thing I can say is that on Firth C, it's very likely that eventually you will see the return of some familiar faces, um, not guaranteeing anything, but there are characters that cross universes uh, because they would still be born, it's just that things would happen slightly differently. Um, and then of course there's the one that I didn't make, which is the universe where my friend Roz <laughs> <laughs> Ra's webcomic that they're working on right now, uh, Catgirl Mecha, takes place where other characters from Firth do appear. Leica is in Catgirl Mecha, or at least as a background character. We have talked about Leica being in Catgirl Mecha, so she exists. Try and ball. Wait, sorry, I saw a question. Leica lore unlocked. Basically, what it is, and I can give permissions to anyone right here now if you want Leica to exist on your planet or on your like in your story oh new ko-fi subscription thank you thank you vv power um i heard a little noise and i got scared if you want Leica to exist on in your story on your planet whatever the only requirements for Leica as a character is that she's trans and that she's a fat dog girl like that's pretty much it other than like yeah like miku she's kind of like <laughs> in a way Leica is like miku and that she's nice Leica is always nice to people i don't think that Leica could be evil um I, that's kind of like the one of the character bible things for her is that Leica can like hurt people like she can mess up but Leica would always pretty much across all universes be uh neutral good I don't think that she has it in her to be anything else. Um, and there's actually been like, uh, with a friend I was talking about it, and they were like, so what if she was like pressed into a corner and like life or death evil, she had to kill someone or she'd die. I'd be like, she would just die. Like that's kind of how she's always been. She would fight to find a way not to do something to hurt someone else or like to do wrong right until like, there isn't an option, and then probably be defeated because she won't do it otherwise. That is how she's always been, at least in my brain. Um, but yeah, there are different Firths, and there are different Firths for a reason, because there's different stories I want to tell. And typically, when I go across, like, the different universes, I try to have the main character be different, because I don't love the idea of focusing on the same character over and over again. So the only story that Like is the main character of is Like is Comet. Um, but there are other stories where the characters appear as background characters or historical figures, the like. Um, none of that will really matter until much later, though, of course. Who in Dungeon Meshi? Okay, so I also have Dungeon Meshi Brain Rot, and I read Dungeon Meshi a while ago. Uh, you're not gonna believe this, but, 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 hold on, hold on, I gotta draw someone. Uh, I'm a big, a big fraud. I'm a big copy fraud. That's actually not true. I didn't realize I did this until I, I was like, wow, I love these two. They're like one of my favorite fictional lesbian couples. And then I was thinking about it. I was like, oh my God, I did it. I didn't even mean to, but you know, what is art without a little inspiration? Um, they're just, they're just, they're just these two. Also, I know I said that they're lesbians, but like, they, while not canon, they might as well be to me. You know, everyone knows. Fallen is my favorite character. Fallen is like, I'm obsessed with her. I love her. She's an, she's a queen. She's my idol. Uh, and I think Marcel is really funny. You need to take your son. 
Why? He won't stop rubbing up against my hand while I'm trying to mix the cookies. Oh no. <laughs> I like, I put the butter and the egg in, and I tried to mix, and he keeps, like, I'm scared he's gonna drool in them. <laughs> Ew! Yeah, I'd prefer not to have cat drool cookies. That sounds nice. Anyway, yeah, it's just Phylon and Marcel. Now, Algernon, I would say, is very different than Marcel. Like, they are not similar, but Phylon is, pr well, I like it's a little more energetic than Fallen is, I think. Fallen is kind of like the, like, space cadet. Do you give permission to draw Leica and Algernon as Farsil? Absolutely. Um, I can show this off because it's a work in progress. If I can find it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have been drawing the Leica's characters. We watched a lot of anime. Oh god, hydrating. And getting drowned. Mm. I'm hydrating. Um, we've watched a lot of anime this week, and the last two weeks, actually. We just watched, um, Gurren Lagann, and so I, while I was watching, obviously, I was like, well, so, Roadboy would absolutely love, oh, thank you, Lemmy, hee <laughs> hee, Roadboy would absolutely love Gurren Lagann, like, his chapter's coming up, and so you'll know more about him soon, but I just was watching it, and I was like, this would definitely be his favorite anime um but then that brought up the question like what anime would everyone else like for sure Leica would like um soul eater like i was gonna do a picture of Leica as maka um mars as krona and then uh road boy as black star and then uh ua is stein because ua a lot of people have said that ua's voice sounds like stein to them like in their head that is not accurate that's not what he sounds like to me but i do love the comparison of the two of them because they have similar like s mad scientist dad like caricatures that's like what he is to me but he's not that's his voice is too deep i like stein's voice but that's not what ua sounds like um and then for Mars, Mars I really like racked my brain for a while. I'm still not 100% sure, but I do want to do them all in Dungeon Meshi cosplay at some point, especially because then I control Mars' Izutsumi and I wanted to do that forever. What does UA sound like? There's a few different correct answers for what UA could sound like. Um, someone said Rain Whispers, and that's true. Like, UA would sound like Rain Whispers. T UA's... So UA was based off of one of my college best friend like if you put me one of my college best friends and a few different fictional characters into a blender that's what would make ua like he didn't have one solid source of inspiration um but then also um oh mr kwan i'm blanking on his first name the actor from every everywhere every everything everywhere all at once the dad um raymond he's also a very big inspiration for UA's character, so I could also imagine him sounding like uh, him. And then the someone had said that UA to them sounds like one of like a Pokemon anime. Kihei Huikwan, yes, thank you. Um, do they have voice claims, or is there no real example and it's more in your head? Um, so a lot of the characters have voice like ideas but because in so my thought is like like a like his comet i don't know if i'd ever want it to get animated it'd be cool if it could so i would never want to be like this is what the character must sound like or it will be wrong because then like if it ever does get animated and we can't get the voice claim that i want i'll be sad but there are definitely ones that i've thought like oh this is what they sound like to me like while i'm writing them Mars's baby Marceline to me. No, Cry, ever since you said that, I have not been able to hear Mars's anything but baby Marceline. So that's actually one of them where I'm like, if it, if they don't sound at least a little bit like that, I don't think I'll be satisfied. We'll just have to find someone similar. Are you going to post the drawing when you're doing right now on YouTube as a speedrun? Um, I don't post commissions as speed paints because I am typically doing commissions during stream. And while it's not impossible to edit the speed paints from stream VODs, it's a little more difficult because I have to chunk up the clip. Um, and also just because I like doing speed paints, I hate to say I know that I'm doing them as speed paints, but I like to know 
to keep my file organized so that it is a little nicer to watch to a viewer. Um, and part of that is not zooming in a whole bunch because when you, like I'm not going to do it super fast, but when the speed paint does this over and over again, it can get really disorienting for the viewer. So I tend to line entire pieces zoomed out. Um, so to answer that, sadly no, I won't do this one as a speed paint, uh, but there will be other speed paints. Actually, all of the Pokemon trading card designs that I did, I have recorded as speed paints. So as soon as I get the green light that I can share those designs, there will not just be one new speed paint, but three new piece speed paints. Uh, and I'm hoping that we can post those soon, but they're saying August, so it's probably going to be a while. Do you mind if I draw Laika as more of a dog than her current- Oh, absolutely! No, 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 no! Please draw her more as a dog. Actually, one of that's one of the things that, like, with the Firth characters that I find myself kind of running into a wall is that like what works well for a comic design is not actually how I would typically draw furries. Um, and so a lot of the background dog characters look more like the actual dogs that they're supposed to be, whereas Laika is kind of just like, her species is doggy, like she has nothing. <laughs> She's not a specific dog. She's actually based off like Snoopy and the Goofy movie uh, dogs. And Snoopy in the Groopy movie? Goofy movie, I said. <laughs> also, I saw Honeydew Boo. I, it was from a while ago, but you asked, is pushing yourself to produce good art... Is... I'm assuming you say... Is pushing yourself to produce good art... I heard it was bad to do so. So... I would say that... It depends what you mean by pushing yourself, of course. But... Y typically, if you have to force yourself to draw something like you're not having fun it's not that it's bad but it's not sustainable like you might be able to do like one or two pieces that you really like push push yourself hard but you're not going to be able to do that every single time um what's best to do is to draw what's fun for you to draw and in those like within doing those fun pieces give yourself little challenges and then if there are big pieces that you'd like to tackle, there's nothing wrong with that because like once a month I'll try to do like a big fully rendered piece that I record as a speed paint and then post. But I only do that once a month, like that is not every single piece that I do. I would say that the detail level between those and the commissions that I do here is like if commissions were like a 7.5 for the level, like the amount of time and effort I put in, those recorded pieces are like anywhere from like a 9.5 to a 10. And then the little scribbly doodles I do for Twitter are like a 4.5 to a 5. And then anything below this, I just won't post because it doesn't feel like this, it doesn't feel like I deserve the social media clicks reward for doing anything that's less effort than a 4.5 to a 5, on a scale of 10. Oh, a raid! Hello! Also, I'm pretty sure he had a sp- I know that, but I'm pretty sure he had a species. Wait, for Snoopy? Very- I actually sketched some Laika-inspired, very snoopy s dogs a little bit ago. Well, now I gotta read back. <laughs> Laika is an ambiguous cartoon canine. I think Snoopy's a beagle. Uh. Snoopy is called a beagle in all of his like official like merch and lore, but when you look at beagles, Laika doesn't look like a beagle. Laika looks like a Snoopy, so I can't say that Laika is a beagle. Laika like, doesn't look like a beagle. Laika looks like a Snoopy. Well, so here's you know here's the design evolution, right? The original Snoopy looked like this, and he does kind of look like a beagle, and then he inspired Puchaco, who looks like this because they didn't want to get copyright struck by the, the Peanuts company, and then that inspired Laika, who looks like this, and now Laika doesn't look anything like any of those things. Like, she does not look like a beagle, even though that was, like, the root of the inspiration. Laika looks like a Snoopy. She does. What brush do I use? So, I think that my card is below. Yes? Yes, okay. If you go into my rules and you click my card, I have an FAQ and it it's a build that I made. You can follow it. It's a very, very simple build. Like it should not take you more than three minutes to make this brush. And then uh that's what I use. There's no like download link, but it's 
partially it's because exporting stuff from Photoshop is kind of annoying for me personally. Um, but also part of it is I want to encourage people to learn to build brushes. So I made it so that it was something that could be built in any program, like any kind of art program. And if you just Google, like, how do I make brush in insert your art program there? Um, yes, Ra, my, my friend Ra here. Here, I'm pinning this actually. Wait, there we go. Willow's brush is a standard round brush made slightly wider plus 60% size jitter. That is true. It's meant to emulate like um, a Sharpie because when I was a kid and I did strictly traditional art before I switched mostly to digital, I used a thin point Sharpie to line all of my art. So it produced this kind of like bleedy effect that I really liked and I wanted that to carry over into my digital art. It was like a few years ago that I did that because my digital art started to feel really like stiff and kind of stale. And so I made that to kind of uh, mimic my old tool of choice, and it helped a whole lot. I used to draw with thin Sharpies on everything. Uh, oh wait. Eventually you'll get wh who you want to do, but for now it's like your skill will be bigger than what you can do. Which is why when you practice sometimes, sometimes when you practice it looks bad, but you'll be like, ah, oh, this sucks because I know I can do better, but you got to give yourself grace because you're still learning 100%. That's a very, that's like a very good piece of advice. Also that even really good artists draw really crappy sometimes. Like it is something that everyone needs to understand and give themselves a little more grace for is that you cannot be like Mozart. No, not Mozart. God, you can't be like producing Picasso. Picasso. Although I, okay, here's my beef. I don't like Picasso. Sorry. <laughs> don't like Piscasso. Piscasso. Uh, mm, if I say uh, my favorite classical artist, I don't think anyone's gonna know him. Uh, Van Gogh. We can't be Van Gogh every single time. We have to understand that, like, even the quieter pieces in between, or like the little scribbly doodles, are like your resting period between the bigger pieces that you do that you're proud of. And you need those p moments of quiet and rest in order to return stronger and do greater things in the end. Like stretches, like athletes stretch, artists scribble. Like in between doing the big races, you've got to take time to do things that aren't that. And that's what your doodles and your drills are. Van Gogh. Yeah, Van Gogh's... No, no, Van Gogh was not the artist I was going to say. I do like Van Gogh, though. I, I think he's cool. Uh, he makes me... His, like, life story makes me kind of sad, emotional, but, like, I do like him. No, the artist I was going to say is Louis Wayne. I've talked about him a few times, but, like... Hi? Oh, sorry. I was just going to ask if you wanted any noodles. No, I'm okay. I had a ham sandwich before okay. the stream. I'm going to make rabbit noodles. <laughs> Thank you. I'm okay. I haven't gotten around to fully reading like his comet, and I adore it, and I... Oh, I'm so glad. I want Yue. Don't worry, Yue's in it. Oh, and I'm glad everyone knows Louis Wayne. Louis Wayne makes me so... Both Louis Wayne and Van Gogh. Oh, I introduced you to him. Oh, that makes me really happy. Oof, sorry. I've been drinking coffee all day. Um... No, like, I... I don't ever want to call myself an art history guy because I feel like I lack a lot of the like knowledge that people that genuinely have art history as their major have. But I also kind of discredit myself because I think I know more than like a layman would know. Um, cause when I, so I took my first art history class in high school and we started like with like cave paintings. Like we didn't just go right into paintings. We went like cave paintings, early art, clay sculptures, old, I think we went through like every or most major eras of Chinese artwork and like pottery. And then we went to like Corinthian columns, Greek sculpture, then paintings, then modern art, but like modern, like the 1900s, then modern, modern art from like the 2000s. And hey, I'm an art history major. And I didn't know who Louis Wayne was. You no. Well, I'm so glad to share him because I love him so much. Like in terms of historical anthropomorphic artists, he's like a huge and huge inspiration of mine. And since I'm introducing him to a few people here, I can give a little bit of his story. Um, Louis Wayne is an artist that is very like, uh, what's the right word? 
when uh, when people that are not art heads talk about Lewis Wayne, they usually yes, okay, what Kai Master is saying. They usually talk about the fact that Lewis Wayne suffered from a, de a degenerative disease of the mind that caused his art to become more abstract as he got became like more ill. The problem with that is that's not necessarily true. He experienced periods where his art became abstract due to his illness, yes, but like ultimately his art was a healing and like a crutch to him when he was in most in need of it and it was something that he was actually encouraged to do while he was in hospital because it was comforting to him like it offered him solace do you know good places to research about him i'm going to be completely honest i've read through the wikipedia article on him and it's very simple and straightforward and it does give it it's a very kind wor kindly worded summary of his life i'm used to mentally ill artists especially being spoken about kind of like circus animals so to have the wikipedia on him actually be very like favorable was a nice change of pace um i read it because i was trying to explain some things about him to a friend and they were asking where they could read and i was like i mean i hate recommending wikipedia but it was a really good summary so it's better than i could do the important part of the, to know about Lewis, Lewis Wayne, though, is he was an illustrator. He drew anthropomorphic cats and other animals, but primarily cats because he really, really loved cats. Um, and he would do illustrations for political comics, newspapers, advertisements. But he was... The, I cannot diagnose a man I never met, but he was very trusting of others and he some had sometimes had trouble striking his own like business deals because he didn't really understand what exactly his art was worth and also because he was very kind and trusting of others he would get swindled out of his art a lot of the time so a lot of his pieces like his original works are just lost because of this um yeah he's and the other part of this too is that he was a very sweet man, and he had a very tragic life. He lost his first wife, I believe, when they were both very young. Uh, I think that they were like both in their 20s. And then also lost like a beloved pet cat. And it, it was just a series of very striking tragedies in his life that led to him uh, not having the most solid mental health. And then I do believe too that the illness that he suffered from was just purely like physical. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like a mental illness per se, though it did affect his perceptions. It was also a degenerative disease. Um, yes, and his first cat inspired a lot of his works. That's true. So he, yes, his siblings too. So I I admire him a lot. I love his work. I like him as a person. It's his story is very personal to mine. Um, like I said, I can't diagnose anyone because he is a man long passed away. But it his story is relatable. I'm I have autism. I had a pretty not nice childhood, and I spent a very long time being taken advantage of by people that I trusted because of that. So hearing his story and hearing that he was still loved and taken care of very late into his life and that he continued to do what was important to him and draw what was important to him late into life that meant a lot to me and like hearing his story i like so i like lewis wayne he's my favorite my favorite uh artist i would say like my favorite historical artist there's a lot of modern artists i really look up to that I am happy because everyone loves me drawing. I love that one. My And I saw someone else ask for my favorite piece. I am so terrible with piece names, but the one that I really like by him, it's a brown tabby cat, and it's kind of giving like this like very wise, but like sweet side eye, and he's got little glasses. He looks just like my cat. And I, I think it was supposed to be like a self portrait too, but in the same way that I can see with some people's fursonas, it was just such a perfect drawing because I can almost see Lewis Wayne through it, even though he's never- I don't think he ever drew himself as a person. Or if he did, I'm forgetting. It was like this, but I can't remember- and then there was like a candle or something here. Is it this- yes, that one! I love that piece. It's like one of my favorites. Oh wait, is that Keith Haring? Am I dumb?
Did I miss something? No. No, that was Lewis Wayne, right? Unless I'm crazy. No, I'm right, I'm right, okay, okay. I got jump scared. Talking about a comment. Okay, 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 okay. I was like, oh god, now I'm embarrassed. I was talking about my favorite piece from an artist decided by him. Um, Lewis Wayne had a first. Oh yeah, he totally did. He had a fursona. That's one of the reasons why, like, when I talk to people about furry art, I, I've had this conversation a few times now, and I talked about it on stream last time too. When people say they don't like furries, I often try to kindly and gently challenge that and figure out why, because there are some very legitimate reasons to be uncomfortable with or wary of furries. There are a lot of issues within the furry fandom, the contemporary furry fandom of the internet today, but that's just because it's a large space occupied by people that like to in indulge in fictional characters. Like, that is going to happen. Especially because while some people use escapism to escape from the life that they live that's painful, some people use escapism to escape into a life where they wish to inflict pain or do other things. And that sometimes is not a very favorable reflection of the person that we're speaking of. So that's why when people say they don't like furries, I'm always like, listen, I understand why you say that now, but I do need to walk you back a little bit and make you realize this is probably not a unique issue to furries and just human beings ind indulging in fiction in general. And furries have been around for a very, very long time and usually are not like that. And I usually bring up Lewis Wayne and other older anthropomorphic artists. Um, and I think most conversations I've had that, like that, the person has either, they've either left and like considered a new perspective, which I consider a success, because if I can even get someone to think, that's that's good enough for me. Even if they end up at the same conclusion, I'd be a little sad for that topic specifically. But the conversation, the fact that they were willing to have it, it that's, that's a win to me. Um, but... I have also had multiple people be like, oh, I didn't think about it that way. I guess it's not that I don't like furries. I just don't like XYZ group of people. And yeah, that's kind of what I, th that's usually what I thought. Also, like, what do they think a furry is? Like, what's their context? Furries also unironically run like a lot of the world's infrastructure. So not a lot of them are like that bad. No, yeah. Furries are such a wide and broad label. God, I was talking about that to one of my Tumblr mutuals. <laughs> My Tumblr mutual Barra dragon, um, the other week, where he was saying that, like, he likes being a furry, but he really doesn't like most of the furry fandom. And I was like, honestly, I don't feel like, I don't feel as though I don't like the fandom. It's just the idea that furries are a fandom to begin with is kind of flawed when it's more so just like an entire genre of artwork at this point. It's kind of like when people talk about the anime fandom. There is no real anime fandom. It's just anime is a genre. It's, or it's not even a genre, it's a medium. Because you can't call all movies or all, like... I don't know. You can't call all music videos the same genre. It's like... It's an art style, yeah. But even then, like, art style changes. So what... What else is it other than a collective of similar media with some shared tropes? Um, I got into this last week though, so I don't want to beat a dead horse. It's just like, you know, there are going to be some similarities between... Oh wow, they're already done? Oh, one is. Thank you. Rob Hofer, thank you. Alright, Farish brought me a cookie, I'm very happy. When will I do my next live stream? Very soon. Within the week, actually. <laughs> I started out just doing, um, one stream last week, because I wanted to get myself, like, used to it. But Forrest and I have talked for a bit. He's going to stream two times a week, and I'm going to take one of his three days. Um, so I'll be streaming on Tuesday and Thursday, and he'll be streaming on Monday and Wednesday. That way we alternate, and it gives his voice a break on Thursdays instead of going two days in a row. And yes, it is Minecraft music. Guys, I'm gonna be so honest, finding music that I can play during streams that's royalty free, kind of painful. I found out that you can play the entirety of the Diamond Pearl 
plat uh, platinum soundtrack for free because the Pokemon Company allows you to use it like for free now. Um, but that's all I got. That and Minecraft music. Hmm. I've seen Brand New Animal, and I have problems with it. I think the animation is very pretty, and I think that it was a fun concept. But the positive things I have to say about it end there. Which is why I don't talk about Brand New Animal. Um, and that's- I also feel bad being, like, too critical of any, like, furry media. Because I am a furry, so I'm always excited to see new anthropomorphic media. At the same time, though, uh, I can't- I can't consume anything mindlessly. Like, I'm always looking for the story, and I'm trying to see how I feel about what they're doing with the characters, what they're doing with the world. And there are a lot of flaws in Brand New Animal. But I also know a lot of people really like it, so I try not to talk too much about it, because I don't want to step on any toes. That's how I feel about Zootopia, too. Hmm. No, it is needed. Like, okay. No, I will get into it, because you're right. Let me finish chewing my cookie, though. Because this is a common occurrence, right? Like, it's getting on... It's getting too frequent. And to answer your question, the reason I don't like Zootopia is the same reason I don't like Brand New Animal. So... Very, very basic concept of writing fantasy racism or oppression to keep in mind. When you're writing an oppressed group of people or an oppressed race, you have to remember how real life racism and oppression functions. Real life racism and oppression of minorities does not happen because those minorities have any unique skills, powers, they don't pose any unique threat to the majority that oppresses them. The sole reason that oppression happens is because of difference between people. And that is a faultless, like, there's no reason for it to happen, essentially. Like, you should not oppress someone because they're different from you. The trap I find a lot of fictional, fantasy, sci-fi writers fall into is that they want to write a racism allegory. Thank you, Tinaverse, for the sub. Sorry, I have to pause to be polite, and I appreciate the support. And also, hello, welcome. Sorry, you can't- <laughs> you subbed at a time when we were talking about a serious subject, but I want to be nicies. Um, with a lot of fantasy writers and creators, they want to write a racism allegory or they want to write like a fictional oppression allegory but in doing so they can't help but write a reason for that oppression to happen and i'm not talking about like the justification that the oppressors use to oppress the minority because that does happen like people will find reasons to justify the people that they oppress they're just not truthful like they're their excuses the base of all oppression, the the only truth that exists there is that a larger party of people oppresses someone that's dissimilar to them. Meanwhile, within Zootopia, there's a pretty fun there's pretty fundamental reasons for the predators to be feared. So anyway, that opening scene with the ice cream, the oh there's a them scene was actually really good, but other than that, oof. Yeah. Like queer people equal pedophiles. Exactly, exactly like that. It's exactly like that. And the other thing that I think it's important to mention is that, like, even in- so I can speak specifically of trans people. When you try to fight oppression on the terms by which oppressors justify oppression, so to speak, oppressors will say that they don't like trans people because they will say trans people are pedophiles. To say no trans people aren't pedophiles is going to backfire because within every demographic of people, there will be bad actors. There are going to be bad trans people. There are going to be bad gay people. There's going to bad, be bad disabled people. But you 
also have to understand that that is a it's a straw man argument trans people are not bad on the basis of them being bad they're bad on the basis that any person can be bad and also be other things so you have to dissect those arguments when you come across them you if someone says they don't like trans people because trans people are pedophiles then you can say then just don't like pedophiles because that those things are not correlated in any means i feel like the drive for world building the way it currently is kind of makes the issues more prevalent everything has to have a reason when literally some things in real life are very flimsy reasoning no exactly they absolutely are i mean actually i think more justifiable is your reason could your reasoning could be an in-universe law or system of ethics that is outdated because that's exactly why so much oppression happens today is well there's the physical biases that exist in racism where it's just like a literal visual difference that people are reacting to because they're racist or using things like religion or belief systems or systems of law to oppress groups of people because that's the way things are air quotes supposed to be but those systems no longer serve the public that they were created for nor did they ever really they just served the people that were in power at the time of their creation people are illogical and the need for logic and fi fiction disregards that but then you have people being like um plot hole and there's eugenics. Yep. Um, so my also I I do keep seeing people ask for drawing process, and I promise I'm seeing you guys. I just addressed a comment earlier. If you are looking for a tutorial of anything specific, I am happy to answer your question. But general questions like art process or art style, I don't know how to answer just because uh it's a bit too broad. Like, I do a lot of work, so I don't know what it is specifically you're asking for. But specific questions I'm happy to answer. On top, over-representation over does not equal alliance. Yeah, no, that's true too. I think it also doesn't work with furries because animals are going to be different depending on species, and like, there's just no- oh, for sure. For sure! You can't relate the ways that, like, animal species interact with each other so, okay, the one instance I'm going to bring up and say that I saw someone use animal allegories to represent oppression was in the case of the, the graphic novel Mouse. And Mouse is a comic written by a Jewish man who is the son of a Holocaust survivor. I really, really like Mouse. It was one of the first graphic novels I ever had to read for school, and I think that the allegory works very well in his favor. The difference there is that he's telling a story of oppression from the perspective of an oppressed party using a typically demeaning representation of Jewish people to enhance the telling of his story. It is a deliberate choice challenging something that was formerly a like harmful stereotype and representation. Trolls 2 is hand, hands down one of the best fantasy racism allegory. Yeah, I actually really like Trolls 2. I, I was t talking about it on uh, Tumblr a few days ago, and I was like, is this, is this embarrassing? But, like, it was really good. I liked it. I thought it was great. Um, But, yeah, I, I thought Mouse was well done. I think that there are places for people to tell stories, but generally speaking, just in terms of writing and safety, it's probably good not to try to use any sort of animal allegory for racial stuff if it's not your story to tell. Like, as a white person, I am not going to sit out here and start trying to make animal racism politics because while I have nothing but good intentions, there are going to be, like, stereotypes and harmful tropes that I am unaware of simply by not living that experience, and I do try to learn about them so that I don't accidentally do those things, but I would never deliberately try to dissect or, like, engage with them in my own creations. It just doesn't feel like it's my place to be telling that story, if that makes sense. Representation through animals is so good because they're really easy to tell to kids, but they have to be told well. Yeah. Wait, Laika. You sent a Laika? I want to see. Oh my god! 
Oh, I love how you drew her nose. This is so cute. Oh my god, wait, that's that's going on the wall. Lemmy, that's really cute. Thank you. The smiler. Actually, I really like when people draw dog like lips with like the black lips that dogs have. Cause I think that that's cute as a little lipstick. The only reason I don't do her like that is because I wanted her to look more uh let's say like girly pop, but I actually really like her with it in your drawing. I think it looked cute. Um, I also like her nose. I didn't give like a snoot. Um, I don't know why. Like when I was designing her, it just didn't feel. I think she, the Pachaco was in my mind. But like when I've been drawing her now, and I'm giving all the other other dogs like the other dog furthians snoots, I'm just like, does like I have like a like a nose? birth defect like does she have a snub nose and then i was like looking at how i drew rover and i was like well rover's got that too so maybe it's just whatever species of dog they are and then it came to does Leica have sleep apnea and then, then i was like we've gone to she can't breathe she's she's like a pug she's got she got sleep apnea she snores this is all canon by the way now i'm just deciding it i'm arbitrarily also, so that you all know, the cookie that Forrest brought me was very good. It was oatmeal chocolate chip. Get her ass a CPAP machine. Like an Algernon start sleeping, have like sleeping in the same area and Algernon's just like wide awake staring like this and Laika is laying next to her, like mouth open, full bear snoring, like she's trying to breathe. She can't breathe. And Algernon is, like, thinking about everything. She's also got mouse ears, so it's gotta be, like, amplified by, like, 200. <laughs> Unsustainable breeding practices! The other thing, uh, I... It's such, like, a silly thing to think about, or, like, headcanon, but I... You know me, uh, with my characters. I think about all things, forever. They're people, they're my friends to me. Um how everyone sleeps and like where they sleep Laika obviously because she travels sleeps a bunch of different places she'll sleep in inns she'll sleep in people's homes that they lend out to her um she has a sleeping bag that she brings on the road but I was thinking about Yue and I kept trying to think of like a bedroom design for him but the more I thought about it I don't think he sleeps in a bedroom like I'm fully convinced that Yue just has a couch or like a pull out that he has in the observatory office area where the telescope is and he just sleeps in there uh i gotta go now thank you for coming is lily oc brain you always slips like that pic of ab all right well now you have to send it because i don't know what picture you're talking about is like an algernon and a t for t uh lesbian relationship they will be i don't want to spoil too much but like there's a reason that I call Algernon Leica's girlfriend. They just haven't- she's not- she's not in it yet. Um, she's close though. I actually was doing- like, I was working on pages today, and I finished page 101, and I realized the fact that we're now one- one-seventh of the way through the story, and that's- it doesn't feel like a lot, especially considering how much I've drawn. UA napping from a little hammock. I think Yue would fall out of it. Shut up! <laughs> Stop it! Also, yes, Leica is bi. Leica's bi, um... Yeah, I, sorry, I read lesbian because that was the word that I saw, but yes, they are sapphic. Um, Leica has dated a bunch of different people and had flings with a d bunch of different people. She's a little bit of a... What's the word? She's like a crooner. I don't know what the girl version of crooner is. Heart throb in around like a fucks. She's in her twenties. What do you think? Play. She's not a player either. Like so. Here's the thing. I don't think like is a player because I don't think like goes out with the intention of doing that. I think that she's just very friendly, and because of that, she meets a lot of people and she travels a lot. So. She meets people, and they have their, like, few days of knowing each other and fun, and then she disappears into the sunset. And that's kind of how she's always been. Um, not for any, like, emotional distance or, like, dislike of those people, just because that's the person that she is. She's adventurous. This is the link. She Ramona Flowers? 
I that. saw that on <laughs> stream. Um, and no, she's not Ramona Flowers, just because Ramona Flowers has messy breakups and Laika is, is... I would say that Laika probably has never had a messy breakup in her life because she wouldn't be interested in someone that was like that. I think it's pretty clear right off the bat that when Laika comes into town, she's like, I'm going to be here for like three days. Who wants to go run and frolic in the woods and then I'm going to be gone? Bye. And Firth is, isn't the kind of world where body traits don't matter as much. Um, I don't know. Like, do you mean, like, are there beauty standards? Because no. If I had to imagine a world, then no, there are no beauty standards on my planet. Um, I actually have had this question come up a bunch of times while I was, like, working and, like, writing. Of, like, I want to be able to represent the experiences some people face because to erase them would feel, like, cold. But I also want to make a world where everyone can also just, like, be happy. So there's been a bunch of times where I'm like, well, would transphobia ex exist? Would fatphobia exist? And I think that some of them are like, these things probably would exist, but I don't have any intention of tackling them in the story because it just wouldn't... It doesn't make sense in Laika's Comet. I might do so in later Firth stories. Um, but then for, like, fatphobia, I just don't think... I don't think it would exist because animals' bodies are so different that it wouldn't make sense for it to exist. Willow, I'm shaking you around. Why are you shaking me? People in wrong parts. Well, so... Don't worry, he's okay. He's in the background. He's just making cookies. I dropped them. You dropped the cookies? Yes. I'm sorry. Also, when was the last time... Click the link I sent. What other link did you send? I saw the Ioba link. I saw it! I saw it! The horrible picture of him sleeping. Fars came in and showed it to me. I don't want... Is this what you want? Is this what you want me to do? Hold on. <laughs> God. Is this what you want from me? <laughs> I don't even know how to draw the legs doing that. Why is he stanced up like, ugh? I hate this picture. I hate this picture so much, but I have to do it. Hold on. God, the fucking arm. I'm like... This is probably the most cursed Laika's Comet image I will draw. Other than- well, no, because the how bikers eat their sketty picture is good. That's a blessed image. This is evil. Making me do this to him. Hold on. How would a rabbit wear headphones? I guess they could be earbuds. That actually kind of makes it funnier. What the fuck is his legs? I hate this. I'm not looking at chat because I have to look at the ref image right now, so if you guys are all dying at this, I'm sorry. I have to- okay, so his face is like in a pillow. I'm making his eyes closed because I don't want to do whatever the facial expression on that is. That's so evil. 45 year old men when they listen to music in their bed alone. He's listening to Radiohead. This is how he's listening to Radiohead. Okay, okay. T-shirt. I will put him in pants, though. Oh, his glasses. UA when he lays down in glasses, because he's a, a workaholic old man. Okay, okay. Are you happy now? I've drawn the worst picture of you I've ever drawn in my entire life. I hate this so much. I hate this so, so, so much. This is the worst thing. There. Now leave me. Let me at peace. <laughs> like a bisexuality. No, you ain't. Don't do it. The way you drew this so fast. I was a storyboarder for college. That was like what I did in all of our projects. I have to be able to draw quickly or else I would get killed. They would feed me to the wolves. Thank you dearly. Does this man even have a bedroom? No. So that's what I had decided was the, um, hmm. 
How much can I show? Hold on. Let me see if I can find the map of the place. They're still edible, but this is what they look like now. I'll still eat them. I don't care if they fell. They're pretty yummy. This is one of the better ones. Oh. <laughs> They're all kind of smushed. <laughs> You're posting that on Tumblr. Wait. Do you mean the Leica picture? Because if you're posting the Leica picture on Tumblr, I will happily reblog it. But please don't post the UA Alibi image. Actually, you can, but it's evil. Hmm. Where did I put that? Is it, um, no, this is not what I was looking for. This was, okay. This is important, though. I can explain that in a second. Hmm. Do I have it under the observatory? Or did I throw it away? Honestly, I might have gotten rid of it. Okay, but I can do a quick map. Um. Also, hi Puppy Chan 404. You can ask a question if you have one. I am gonna just make like a little quick map though. Cause like this is It's crappy, so I'm sorry, but this is like the best way that I can do it. This is a telescope stand. <laughs> and this is a couch. And this is UA's computer monitor. Yeah, and then these stairs descend downstairs. This is like the stairs that you've probably been, or maybe not, been seeing in the background. This is where they ate breakfast in that one, in the scene that we're in right now with like all the big windows. And then this wall is the wall that they were projecting onto while they were eating breakfast talking. And then here, there is a door that leads to the bathroom. And then there's a cupboard. And then there's the kitchen sink cutout, which is like right here. But this is, and then here, it's like a circle. This is Laika's room. It's an old closet that they cleaned out, uh, but this is where she sleeps, and then Yue sleeps right here on the cot. Because, like I said, at first I was like, I don't think Yue would have- I, I was trying to design Yue a room, but then I was like, he wouldn't have one. Male living space. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the observatory is beautiful, but my head keeps calling you a pathetic old man for sleeping there. He is. Well, it's also not meant to be somewhere that like people live as a house. So you wanted to be sure when raising Laika that she had like her own space with like a closed door so that she could be like have privacy. And so in doing so, the bathroom, this was an add-on and then there's storage that's downstairs. So like a basement. And then the rest of this is just like a giant, vast open space with a bunch of like bookshelves and stuff. So I, I saw, sorry, I saw somebody ask me if I was okay because I'm hurgling in the background. I think what you probably heard was me crumpling parchment paper. So whenever I bake, instead of trying to cut parchment paper to fit, I, <laughs> I hate it. Sorry. <laughs> um, whenever I bake, instead of cutting parchment paper to fit, I crush it. So that way I can have it do what I want it to do and... Sorry, I'm hurgling. <laughs> well, I was going to say, someone asked an art question I saw. I just wanted to finish explaining what I was explaining, but I think it said something about how to draw arms. I have a lot of trouble connecting them. So, let me see. Also, I want to make sure. I'd sleep on the floor in that observatory and be happy as hell. I mean, I'm sure they've done it before. Like, I'm sure, like, Leica slept on the floor in here. Here she is. Hold on. New layer. Here she is. Um, this was like a little doodle I did to plan the opening scene for chapter two. And fun fact, it's been almost a full year and a half since I first drew this picture. So getting to this point was like really cool. Damn, UA, at that rate, make an indoor tent for yourself somewhere. Oh yeah, this is a doodle because it took me like uh, 15, 20 minutes? I had to do it at a lunch break at work, so it had to be quick. Um, but yes, this was a doodle. I was thinking of cleaning up and making it a print at one time, but I feel like 
I don't know. I don't know if I'll come back and revisit. I might. It's actually, I might make it like wider so that it's more like a postcard. Uh, you should 100% have this posted. I'm telling you, the reason I don't have a lot of these, like this kind of development style art posted is because I'm saving it for the possible ability of having an art book at some point. Um, so to PuppyChan 404's question about arms, I do have a whole Pinterest Sorry, I'm putting my little at here. If you ever want to learn anatomy, and if you want anatomy tutorials, please visit this Pinterest because I have a whole folder that's just called Art Insp, and it is full of tutorials and stuff that I have found and like posted to Pinterest myself, things I've saved on Pinterest, and it's organized by folder and specific topic. So if you are looking for anatomy help, character design help, color palette help, scenery, anything, there should be a folder on there. And if there's not, I will tell me and I will make one and seek out the references myself. That I've been trying to curate that folder for like, I think three years now, because I am one guy and how I draw something is not how everyone is going to draw something. And I think it's really, really important to look at a bunch of different ways to draw the same thing, because you what, what some one person does might not stick to you. Now, in terms of arms, if you're talking about connecting the arm to the body, you want to start with the torso and remember that the shoulder is like a ball, like it is a ball socket. So while I see a lot of people just like kind of stick their arms on their guys like this, you do want to try drawing the ball encapsulated by the shoulder itself, because I think that that visual kind of like helps with what you're doing. And then also remember that it's not a perfect ball, like there's also like the little, the little pocket here for the armpit. And when you have that ball, it's going to like kind of come over almost, I don't want to say like a sleeve because that's not correct. And I'm sorry if my anatomy is not perfect. This is like my cartoon simplified anatomy that I use. It kind of comes over like this and creates a little bump. And then you have that for the forearm. And then I'm like not explain. I don't know how to explain this other than just arm. I'm not the best at arms myself either. But an important thing to remember for arms is that you could always look at a reference and then, yeah, <laughs> my explanation, horrible. But it took me a minute to get the arm attachment. I do like a skinny vertical oval shape. That works too. Breaking the arm into shapes. Yes. Yes. Also, I don't think that was, I think, hold on. The other thing is that there should be like fat that comes past that's better. The elbow. Not everyone's going to be ripped. So like, the arm is really just a collection of shapes. And the shapes do change depending on how you're flexing them. But the way I've thought about it is that the forearm is like a elongated pentagram. No. Pentagon? Yes. And then the upper arm is just whatever you need to attach to that to make it work. So you can stretch it out. And like, let's say this is the back of the arm, right? So here's the shoulder. You got the pocket for the armpit. You would draw the elbow because you're looking at the elbow there. And then if we were to smooth this out and get rid of some of these lines, boom, the arm. There's definitely a way to draw it like a little more detailed, but like for simple arms, that's how I've always done them. Oh, thank you. My posture was really bad. I personally find it helpful to shape out where I want the hand to go first. Oh, that works too. I I think I'm because I did a lot of gesture work, I am always like I I'm torso pilled. Like I can't not draw the torso first. Sometimes I start with the head, which is bad. You shouldn't do that. Or at least it's not great to do that because then you're not getting in all of the nice forms and if you start with the head you're very likely going to have all of your compositions be like characters standing perfectly straight up, not moving at all. And this is what a lot of my art looks like. But when I start with the torso, I get a lot more shape 
to my stuff because I like remember that the neck and everything is expressive. Hold on, now I gotta do. The only trouble with that is the legs. Legs are always hard. Cause I because they bend, so it's like what looks like a straight leg may actually not be a straight leg. It's bent just ever so slightly. And also people's ass, the ass stick out. There we go. Yeah. Man, I start with the head all the time, figure drawing. Yes, so it's, if you're looking at a reference, you can start with the head. But if you're coming up with something from your brain, like from scratch, start with the torso. Because the torso is an expressive beanbag. Whereas the head is simply a circle or a square. Some people use cubes. I use circle because I can make the I can make a circle of cube in my head and not have to do all that work. Um, but the torso the, the torso you can tell a lot with, and then add the legs in as you go. That's why when I when people are like, oh, I cannot I can only draw stick figures. I'm like, well, can you draw a bean bag? Because if you can draw a bean bag and stick legs and arms you can already draw what a lot of artists start out with for their like, gesture work for animations and comics at least i usually only draw headshots of characters there's nothing wrong with only like with drawing headshots if that's what you want to do but if you want to break out into doing more than just headshots and get into the arms and do like half bodies um try to learn to draw like the chest chest cavity and torso and then like the ways that people can be expressive with their arms so that you don't just have them like standing there doing nothing over and over again um there's i i am also a bit of a figure freak like so i'm biased here but i love the the torso and the chest i think that there's a lot to be told from it and i'm not as big of a fan of like legs um so I always am like, learn this, learn this, because you'll you'll make cool art. Um, but you can tell it in my comics, too, that that's like what I like to draw the most, because whenever I draw, I find the panels that repeat the most are like, they always cut off here and then they don't show any of the legs. What is your canvas size? It is in my card. Thank you. Thank you to the person who applied to. Thank you, Miriam. Ooh, okay, now I need to get back to work. I am leaving these here. I actually have an important question to ask too. Uh, when I'm doing these streams and I have like these pages of doodles, I don't ever know if like people want them or like what to do with them. Some of the doodles were like the Pokemon heads, which were like that would that made like a fun art post. But like for other stuff like this, where it's um like just anatomy kind of scribbles explaining stuff do you guys want these like do you want to keep them or would you rather they just stayed in the stream because i'm happy to do that or hold on to them for later use you we want them opinion on people making au's alternate universes of your stories oh i don't mind at all i actually i'm a huge au fan and i can't make rules for oh i could put it on ko-fi you're right and I'll, I'll put it on Ko-Fi, but I won't put it behind, like, the member wall. Like, I'll just put it on Ko-Fi for public, for everyone to see. Because I would, for art tutorials, I, it's not, I can't morally put that behind the paywall. I know that labor-wise it doesn't make sense because I'm putting work into it. But I am such a believer that information should be public and for everyone to have access to. So I would never put something like that behind a paywall. Um... So I'll hold on to these, and then I'll upload those there. God, I hate that picture. I hate, I like, I need to label that layer so I don't go back to it. Oh, the Pokemon gestures, though. Anyway, um, to the AUs question, I, I am completely okay with AUs. I actually really like them, and I think that it's a great exercise if you're not, like, if you don't have your own OCs yet, or you don't feel, like, strong enough in your character creation to make OCs, um, it's a great way to just slightly tweak a pre-existing character and put them in an environment and experiment experiment with character writing. Um, so I fully encourage you to. I make AUs of my own characters for fun because I like to take characters that I've already made and then put them into something else and be like, so if the circumstances were slightly different, how would they act here? Because it get, lets me get to know them as a person. Um... And also, like I said, there are no hard and fast rules for AUs. The only thing I could say is like, 
Laika would be a trans girl in every universe. That is just true. Um, and that's just because... Like, I'm, again, I'm not going to come after you with, like, a mallet or anything, but there's not a lot of, like, good trans girl rep in, or at least, not good, because that's cruel to the ones that already exist. I want there to be more trans girl rep, so I made more trans girl rep. And I would ask that if someone were to make an AU, that they would respect that I did so deliberately and not get rid of that. Um, but other than that, there's really nothing that's hard and fast. Well, and then, the, like, the Mars is non-binary. That's pretty much it. I would say, like, basically don't erase any of the queer identities of the characters, but you can do whatever otherwise. And I really can't stop you from doing it, but it would make me sad, so please don't. One thing that really helped me learn to draw fat people was making fat OCs and getting obsessed with them. Real. Very real. Do you have a favorite AU? Of all the ones I've made, or just, like... A favorite AU in general, like, be, sp be specific. Are you saying, like, a type of AU to make? Because, uh, maybe I have, like, uh, unless you're talking about, like, with a specific cast of characters and a specific AU that I've made. Ones that you've made. Um, like, I can't say anything that's... No, I can't say anything because technically Firth B is an AU. It started as an AU and then it like became its own story. And there's too much about it that's like related to Lycus Comet, so I can't reveal. If I had to pick a second favorite favorite, I would say that I really like um I made like I've been kind of brainstorming Pokemon AU stuff for Lycus Comet with them as Pokemon trainers. The only problem is I haven't drawn them because there are no canon human designs for any of the Lycus characters. Um, and that was pretty deliberate, right? Like I wanted people to be able to project onto and relate to the characters. There are some characters that have like canon like races like that can't be erased, which is like Yue. Yue is um, Chinese and Vietnamese. And then uh, Shoal is black, but for the rest of the characters, I wanted it to be so that anyone could really, like, see themselves in these characters, and so I have the Pokemon characters in my brain, like, I know what their teams would be and what they would be like as trainers, but I don't have trainer designs because I don't know what I would make them look like as humans. Lethal Company AU. We've I've been playing Lethal Company with Ra and Nick. How long does one commission take you? Uh, depends. Do you mean before or after the Calamitous event? Because before we moved and had to leave all of our friends and I suddenly became a parent, I could finish one of these commissions in like 48 hours. And now it takes me like a week. And on a good week, it takes me a week to finish a big commission. Um, my productivity rate plummeted when my, like, mental health and support network kind of evaporated but i've been able to get myself back into it one because bills gotta get paid somehow and also two because i'm starting to enjoy art again and actually enjoy it instead of it just being like an escape from the world around me yeah now it'll be 48 hours of like grind so i don't want to underplay it but like it I, the reason it took me 48 hours is because I would sit down and just do the commission and only do that for like two days straight. So, um, and when I say 48 hours, I'm also including like the fact that I'm sleeping in between, not 48 hours straight. Um, but now with, you know, we have a kid, we're expected to show up to family events, we have to... We don't really have many social out outings, so my battery gets depleted pretty quickly because I just work most of the time. Uh, it takes me a little longer to get these done than it did before. But probably the still the same like duration of time, if that makes sense. If I were to draw Leica as a Digimon for tag, would it be disrespectful to gl give her give her a glove, <laughs> a Nintendo Power Glove? No, not at all. You can do that. I actually really like seeing what people's design choices are for Laika when they do things, like when they put her in different universes. Like I said, she's like Miku to me. Like, I love seeing Laika in different worlds. I want to know how she integrates. Um, oof, my chest. My productivity rate is always low, but I've accepted that it will be for me. 
Oh, hey, is the music still going? <gasps> no, you guys, the music stopped and I didn't even know. Sorry, I found another one. I found another playlist. Put Leica in the zombie apocalypse. That's actually probably the only one I wouldn't put her in, just because I never want Leica to have to kill. Like, I don't want her to have to do anything like that. She's too nice. Like, she's gonna, like, I'm not gonna say that there's nothing hard or, like, morally challenging in Leica's comet. That's, that would just be a lie. But zombie apocalypse just feels like such a no-win situation because, like, it's so... It is so violent. Like, I don't think she would thrive in that environment. I would never put her there. Wait, Willow, have you seen the game Terra Nil? I have not seen it. Now for like a Miku AU. Actually, I feel like she would cosplay Miku. Oh god, who was it that I was thinking that... Oh, right, right, right. Um, so one of the other voices for UA that is, like, you, this is a canon, you can hear him like this, this is creator approved. Um, Yue is, like, his voice to me sounds like that one clip of, uh, Otacon and Solid Snake. I think it's, like, a fan dub or, like, a fan voice acting thing where someone's, someone's, like, voice acting Otacon and they're, like, they're hacking into the mainframe and Snake is, like, in English, four eyes, and then he goes, they fucking us in our pussies, and I've been thinking about that, and that is what, that is what UA sounds like to me, in my head, but I can't find the clip, I don't know where it is, if anyone finds it, uh, brownie points, but the whole cosplay thing, the reason I bring that up is that I've been drawing the Lycus characters in, like, different cosplay of, like, what their favorite anime would be, and I was like, it'd be really funny to have Yue be like, ah, cosplay, I remember when we did that, and then he pulls out, like, a really crappy, co like, college cosplay of him and Rover as Snake and Otacon, because Rover would cosplay, uh, Snake, Solid Snake. Yep, that's the one, that's the one. Hold on, I'm pulling it up now. Oh, but there was an animation with it, too, that was really good. Ah, uh, yeah, but that's that's the audio, at the very least. Um, So, I was doing, like, little characters and, like, cosplay, and I was like, it'd be fun to do... UA would cosplay Otacon. But the, the real question is, I don't... And I don't know this... I don't know if it would be Rover's idea to cosplay Otacon and Snake and UA was like just excited to join like tag along and do it or if it was UA's idea because he knows that Rover would like uh Metal Gear. That I haven't decided. Unknown to me. Oh my god, I hate trees. I hate trees. I love trees, but I also hate them. Trees, when you draw them well, look really great, and then you're like, wow, I'm so proud of this tree I drew, and then when you have to actually draw the tree, it's like, why did I do this to myself? I actually think that if we're being honest here, this looks too much like an elementary schooler's tree, because this branch would be obscured by, like, leaves. So I have to, like, cover it. There we go. <laughs> I will finish this line art, or at least I'll get pretty far in it. That was my only two goals for tonight, was to finish the line art for this, and to finish the line art for the thumbnail so that I can have the thumbnail ready uh, this week so I can upload the VOD, because some people were asking for the VOD for the last one. Hello, welcome in. Wait, we couldn't hear the audio? Oh, I didn't, sorry, I didn't play the audio out loud because I thought it would be kind of disruptive. Also, I'm scared of getting banned. <laughs> like, I'm scared that I'll play the audio and get my stream banned because it says bad word. I guess I literally said the word out loud. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Don't think about it. I love trees. Can we swap? I'll give you my enjoyment of trees and you'll give me the enjoyment of interior design. Oh, don't worry, I don't enjoy interior design. Also, I'm sorry if this is a stupid question, but what do you mean by gesture practice? I assume it's something related to facial expressions. Oh, no, actually. Gestures are... Hold on. This... I forgot his head. That needs to be bigger. These are gestures. Like, anything that is a study of 
the figure or form is a gesture and you can do it purely from like imagination though when people say gesture studies typically they're talking about like looking at a live model or a video of a person or a photo of, per of a person and trying to capture the movement of that pose that they're making um but if you're doing gesture sketches like you're doing gestures to practice to draw a character before you do your full cleanup drawing, which I highly recommend doing if you are about to start any kind of big piece or like comic to do some gestures for warm up. It is so that you can warm up your brain and your hand for doing like the human form in motion so that you don't draw stiffly. Um, you have both the cats. I do? Yeah, they're loafed. Where? On the floor. Aw, they're watching me. Staring. Blank. Boring. Example UA pose. I have... Baby, could you get my sketchbook from the bedroom? Just one of your, like, brown ones? Yeah, it's brown the brown one? It's the brown one with the Leica stickers on it. Okay. It, no, 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 it's okay if your gestures look wacky. Like, the point of them isn't to look clean, and the only reason that these look clean is because they're digital, and my digital line art looks way cleaner than uh, my traditional line art looks. Hold on. Let me see if I can do... I actually don't know what this pose is. We're just taking it where it goes. That's the actu actually the other thing with gestures, is that sometimes... I will not do them from study. I'll just draw stuff and see where it goes because it's like a good exercise in doing something that's looser than what I do. Thank you. Yeah, it's always meant to be fast and loose. I would. I don't know how I can get this on screen. If this takes like a little bit, I'm very sorry. I did UA gestures for warm up in my sketchbook a few days ago, and I can. I'm like taking a picture so I can show. This might be a really random confession, but I actually want to become as cool as you are when I become an adult. That's so sweet. Thank you. I feel, I don't feel very cool, but it means a lot. Hold on. I think I got a... Yes. And then if I just go here... Sorry, this will only take a little bit. I'm just trying to get the UA gestures. And then... Oh, sorry for that. Haha. Haha. -ha. There we go. Okay. Ugh. Sorry, I gotta blow these up so you can see. When I talk about doing, like, gesture sketches, this is what I'm talking about. Like, it it's messy, it's quick. Take picture, paste it in the Discord or something. Don't worry, I already did it. I did it. I was just... I literally just put it in my Tumblr drafts, as usual. Um, this is what I talk about when I'm talking about, like, gesture drawings. Yes, he's very silly. Yue is probably the most, like, goofy character because he's a bit stringy and not very muscular and very sweet. So it lends... And also he's, like, a ecstatic? I don't know if that's the right word for it. Um... He has a lot of character in terms of, like, his ability to, like, be thrown around and throw himself around. And so doing gestures of him is fun. Leica has a very, like, um, she, like, her design is, the weight is very nicely distributed when it comes to drawing it for me. So I like to draw her in motion pieces a lot because I like to see, like, how she would, like, fight and jump and run and dance. And Yue, I like the same, but I like it for the reason that, like, he's very, um, he's kind of gangly. Like, he's a little bit, like, I hate the word scrungly, I really do, but that's the only thing that's coming to mind and it's killing me. I guess elastic is the right word. The only thing is, I, I feel like Yue would, would, like, pull his back. Like, he's, he's flexible, and I think that he does try to take care of himself, but at the same time, if Yue, like, did anything too intense, he would, like, hurt himself. He is also 45. Like, we have to be realistic here. You can be a well-taken-care-of a well 45-year-old, but he works at a desk. Have you seen Has-Been Hotel? Well, I've watched it. 
I don't like it. Um, I don't talk, listen, I don't talk about things I hate by principle on my main, except for occasionally, but I really, really try not to. And I don't think I hate Has Been Hotel because that would require putting energy into thinking about it, which I don't really. But I did watch it because I like to be an informed hater. I don't want to have opinions about things that are not based in reality and the truth. Until... <laughs> no, I don't want to be... Yeah, UA is 45. Dude, UA's birthday is 1998, and Firth takes place in... Uh, actually, so he's... I think he's 47. Because Firth, as it is right now, is 2045, and UA was born in 19... Oh, no, no, no. UA was born 1999, Rover was born 1998. So, he could still be 45. I think, right? Maybe. I don't know. Bad math. Um, putting citations on hating. Well, it's like, I the, I did want to go on this rant really quick. I think that it's important to acknowledge that people that you don't like personally, morally, ethically, like their politics, are people that you don't consider good people are going to be capable of making good artwork and to try to find reasons to dismiss the art of people that you don't like makes you an art critic that is not going to honestly consume and engage with art and it means that you will miss things that you shouldn't or you'll deliberately ignore things that you shouldn't that said i don't think that has been hotel is very good i want to say that there were like three or four times that I, like, actually genuinely laughed. Like, I wasn't sitting there, like, pinching my nose bridge, trying not to groan. There were there were a few good gags that I thought were, like, well executed. But other than that, I spent most of the time sitting there thinking to myself, it makes sense that the fan base for this is a bunch of teenagers and furries. Like, I understand why a bunch of teenagers and very, very horny furries like this show, because the two things this has to offer is, like, the edginess that a teenager with no autonomy over their life or situation would enjoy as a form of escapism from their lack of control over their own life, and someone that does not critically, critically or, like, intelligently consume any media and their idea of a sexy character is a wolf that's drawn like, like this. I went dead silent. I'm so sorry. cell phone anyway don't say greg knight in the woods now <laughs> okay it does kind of look like greg though you're right it does look like the way that may draws greg and here's the other thing i also know that she's not from has been hotel again i am an informed hater i know she's from hell of a boss but don't even speak to me i have thoughts um i'm not gonna even give it the time of the day though all i can say is that i think that there were I want indie animation to succeed. I want people to... Can you draw UA as Big Chungus? Can, can I do anything else? Can you do you have any other requests? Please? I don't want to do that. I guess no one's forcing me. No. Okay. Well, I guess I have to remember what Big Ch Big Chungus looks like. Oh god. I forgot this was a thing. At some point I'm just com gonna compile all of the images that I've been made to draw on stream and be like, this is what my Twitch chat makes me draw. I hate the shape of this thing. I really hate it. This is, this is painful. <laughs> this is so wholesome. This is so Reddit gold. I will... Paris, you've been a friend of mine for many years. 
actually he's kind of like club penguin shaped if we're not if we're being completely honest here oh no you know who he looks like hey lois <laughs> I can't do with the Peter Griffin voice. It's the worst Peter Griffin in imitation. <laughs> Thank you for the gold, kind stranger. My summon boyfriend button isn't working. Hey, honey, do you want to come to the stream and watch me die? Oh, I can see you. Oh, I know, but they're summoning you. I'm slugged on the couch. Well, then unslug. You're being summoned. Uh, this is... All right, and then how'd they draw his feet? Peter, the horse is here. <laughs> no! Can you draw Leeway's Family Guy death pose? Guys, why are you making me do this to him? Why are you making me do this? He's a nice man. He's a good father. <laughs> That's why they're making you do it, because he's a nice man. You're making me torture this this middle-aged man. Are you okay? Yes. Gotta draw his... I like the fact that he has pants, but, like, they're so... <laughs> Hello? Sorry. Sorry. The Noel treatment? Did they do this to Noel, too? Oh, I guess I can get rid of my gestures, because we don't need them no more. Um, hello? Okay, there we go. Okay, the last thing is the Family Guy death pose, and then no more. You ain't listened to Radiohead one time, and now he's PETA! Wait, Puppy Chan, did you not see the arm stuff that I drew earlier? I was- I don't know if you were here when I did it, but I was explaining the ways to draw the arm where the arm is just a really long pentagon and then a bubble and then a ball for the shoulder and then oh you got lag striked i'm sorry i will say that the the vod will stay up i did do the arms earlier i will keep the vod up and i will also upload them to youtube so if you miss it will be up there but i promise i did what you had asked earlier I don't want to, you to feel as though I did not. Oh god. Okay. It's the Family Guy death pose. <laughs> Me typing frantically. Someone drew Reagan. Someone drew Rain. Reagan does it. How do you say his name? I always say it, Reagan. Okay. Hold on. I can do this. Is UA and Rover doomed Yowie? You could call it that? You could call it that? I think it's a little more complicated than doomed Yowie, but like... Technically, I guess by technical standards, yes. Okay, wait, his foot. What the fuck is this leg even doing? Is it broken. backwards? It's backwards? Yeah, it's, it's straight up broken. Dead. Honey, they're also trying to drown you. Oh my god, I can't drink and draw this at the same time! Okay. <laughs> Ass. The arm. Am I missing anything in chat? I'm drawing this so f like I'm drawing this like feverishly. Not really. Okay. Okay. I have to take off his lab coat just for this, because otherwise- <laughs> Sorry, this feels so mean! What am I- what are you making me do to him? Why are the cats so feral during my stream? Like, my, my stream, boyfriend stream? I have no idea. I think it's because I feed them. 
they want their food, and they want Daddy to bring it to them now. Which is crazy, because I feed them most of the time when you stream. Not all the time. There are definitely times I get lazy. Most? Yeah. Most. Yes! I think you need to rethink what the word most means. <laughs> so cunty hello i thought i fed them during most <clears throat> thanks i will let them starve no i'm kidding no i will try to feed them more require sustenance i'm learning by osmosis how to draw this for emergencies i have never drawn this before this is my first time drawing the family guy death pose if that's even something that you can have a first for i just I can- I, I know bodies. I know how to draw bodies. Well, there you have it. UA Family Guy Death Pose for the person that requested it. Hold on, I want to like make a little dramatic shadow, because I think it adds to it. <laughs> you, you guys are making me put this man in situations. In poses. I think I can organize them nicely. I also think, um, the only thing you could have possibly missed, though, is that somebody asked if you would do a draw and drink stream, like... Like, alcohol, alcohol drink? Oh, I think it would be funny to do that. I didn't know if anyone would be interested in something Can you like add that. a baby Leica or Mars about to jump on him? <laughs> I don't think she would jump on him. But she would just stare at him. This is the this is the after of when he got thrown into a tree. <laughs> and and tried to kill the clover beast and couldn't. Not the right outfit, but not that's beside the point. You're missing one. What? You're missing. <laughs> You're missing his other situation. What other situation? In the sleeping pose. Hmm. How do you how, the anime boy sleeping pose? However, the fuck you're. Oh to say his name. God, Alba, the Alba sleeping pose. Yeah, that one. I guess I'll put this on there too. Yeah, because if you put them all in one layer, it'd be somebody said it'd be a funny way to promote your Twitch. Oh my god! Please come watch my Twitch. Look at what my Twitch chat makes me draw. Where? What? What? What was this even on? Was it on this? It was on one of these. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Hello. Did it freeze? Guys, I think my Twitch froze. Oh, okay, don't apply. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I literally just hit Perspective Warp instead of Transform. <laughs> Probably the cursed, most cursed image that I've ever drawn of UA. I would argue that this is a contending rival to the big Chungus pose. Because this one is... There's more context. I've never played Dramatical Murder, but I know enough about Dramatical Murder... Where I'm like, I would never willingly make. F oh, I realized I drew his arm crunched like he was wearing a shirt, but he's not. Don't mind me like actually making corrections, but if I'm gonna draw a meme, I'm not drawing it ugly, <laughs> at the very least. No matter how much torment happens, I'll always draw you a well. Everyone loves to see middle-aged men suffering. <laughs> don't play it. I don't. I did not have any intention to. I promise. Oh, to the question of the drink stream. I would definitely do that. It would have to be, like, one where I'm essentially, like, made to draw stuff. Because I think if I said, come send me a dollar to draw something, is like, draw something drunk in a certain amount of time, it could get very funny. Um, but I don't want to, like, make people pay. Like, I have to figure out how to moderate it, and I wouldn't know how to do something like that. Because I don't want people to tell me to draw something hateful and then get like, well, I paid money, so you have to draw it. And it's like, no, that's not how this works. You want to get food and come back to this? I'm sorry. They keep doing th the epidemic of the way people treat middle-aged men needs to be put in studies. What is UA in reference to Reagan? They're similar in my mind. Um, UA is a good dad. He's just a little bit sopping wet. 
because he's like not he's only like five feet tall not including the ears and well i guess he's probably more like five four not including the ears and his lover his childhood lover is dead and he is like a nerd so all of those things combined can you draw you in a reagan pose probably I have to look one up. I have to find my favorite. The only one I can think of is the one where he's showing his ass, but I can't find <laughs> that. Where... Well, what about the one where he's, like, pointing, and it's really perspective? I mean, I can do that easy. I don't even need, like, a pose to do that. Actually, that looks like more like his fingers bent, so I need to do it this way. Hands are fun. I like hands. Hands are fun until they're not fun, and then I want to, like, bite rocks. But they're usually fun. Sorry, sorry. Who's like his mom? Uh, Robert. <laughs> Robert? <laughs> that was in the chat. Like his mom will not be... It will be revealed in the comic, but you should not know that yet. So if you know that, you say no, that's a bad hand. See? Like what I said, hands are fun until they're not fun. But yeah, you shouldn't know. So if you know, you say nothing. And for now, saying Rover is perfectly fine. Yue is Hatsune Miku. You're giving fuel to the Yue Dilf community. He's like... He, like his mom will be revealed in the next Avengers movie. Oh god. We're not even gonna talk. We're not even getting into the Avengers, the stream. My boyfriend likes the Avengers, and I love him. So, I used to like the Avengers. Oh, you've changed. You've grown up. It's more like they tried to do too much with it, and yeah. it lost the appeal. I felt that way, like after they brought Spider-Man in, and I like Spider-Man, but what they and I don't even think I hated uh, Homecoming. I wasn't a huge fan of it. But after they brought Spider-Man in, I was like, they're biting off more than they can chew, and they should just stop now. Also, there's the fact that it's, like, military propaganda, but... <laughs> Me turning around and there's, like, 30 less watchers. This is... I know not to be a hater. I can't be a hater. I can't be a hater, because if I hate on anything that's too popular, then people will come for me. They will kill me. They will well, hunt me. The thing me. is, too, I don't even hate it or anything. It's just... Well, yeah, that would require putting energy into it, and I don't really care. Well, I'm a Marvel... I li like, I like Marvel. I'm a Marvel fan. It's just more of... As you said, they bit off more than they could chew, and unfortunately, there's they're not performing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and like I said, I would have to to be a hater of something. I would have to have like the energy to actually put in. And there are flaws with every media and everything that you can possibly consume. But I think with Marvel specifically, I just like when people hype it up. It's it's not like rage that I feel. It's just like. Eh. Like, there's so many other things that you could be watching and consuming that when I see hear someone say that, like, Marvel's, like, their favorite thing ever, I just am like, we're not going to have anything in common. Like, Well, there's that, and somebody said about Disney+, Plus, and it's like, yeah, I can't yep. even watch, I can't watch half the shit that's come out recently because it's all locked on Disney+. Plus. Like, there's no other way to really watch it. I mean, there are ways. Oh, the military gonna... propaganda bit? Um, the U.S. military pays is, like, okay... So there's something fundamental that you need to understand about how Hollywood produces movies. Hollywood has to sign contracts with the U.S. military in order to have representations of the U.S. military in their movies. And the part of the contracts that they have to sign is that the U.S. military can't be portrayed in a negative light. Yeah, I so fun fact, I used to work in Hollywood. I also studied this for my school. So my school for college. Yeah. Yeah, any representation of the military has to be overseen by the U.S. military, which is why if there's any negative representation of them, they cannot be stated or shown by, like, the paraphernalia of the U.S. military. Like, you can only... It has to be just, like, a general... Like, a really good example of this is the, the movie Independence Day, the U.S. military didn't approve of it, so they couldn't call the military an Independence Day the U.S. military, they just had to call it the military, and they couldn't use any of the, like, iconography or symbols from the U.S. military in that movie. Yeah, and it's not something that's very commonly known, right? Like, people, when you say, 
da 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 is military propaganda, everyone's like, well, no, it's not, because the military did some things that were wrong in that movie, but I need to be very clear when I say that. What I, what I mean is that it was a movie that was approved by the U.S. military because they thought it was positive enough of a light for the movie to get greenlit. That's what I mean. Sorry. I have to give context so people don't just think I'm blowing smoke out my ass. I, I do know a few things. <laughs> You get no money you to make shit if you don't toe in line. I totally forgot to post this to Twitter. Cat OCs? Oh. <gasps> no way! Oh, this is so cute! I didn't see this! Okay, also I'm hydrating, I'm hydrating. I have that pulled up so I can save it later. Thank you so much. Icky. Also, I'm so sorry. I think I just hit my microphone. I'm like petting it gently. Yeah, baby, it, you did, and sorry, the mic being on your left side when you turn and rant at the chat on your right side. I My voice is really loud. I'm scared I'm, like, shouting. Uh, I will apply filters later. Okay. Sorry, I didn't know if... Oh, wait, I think that's... Is that too big? Sorry, I still have to finish lining this. This, is my, this was the main task for the night. Bring up how... AI was villainized in like 2D movies and now it's like chillin' movies. Oh yeah, that's also a big thing too. Um, will you ever see the picture I drew of Harbor though one time? It was after you got a bath. I don't- oh or no, I don't think I did. Sorry, I just realized you said, Will, did you? I don't think I did see that. <laughs> BRB, I need to make a lunch meal. Um, there was someone drew a picture of Pluto and Harbor that like Pluto and Harbor together that I have saved that I love very much. It's on my computer, but I don't, I haven't seen many pictures people have drawn of Harbor. I know they exist in this world. Let me see if I can find. Oh, see you, Lemmy. Thank you for coming. And also see you for now, Paris. I might be done by the time that Paris gets back just because I would like to finish this. Um, But realistically, I still have one, two, three three and a half evolutions left so i will be i will be real with myself but getting this not much done was pretty good too i'm sorry to seem annoying but i think you skipped my comment on the 70 oh wait the 75 scrolling up i did not mean to skip it if i did oh i'm sorry how did you and your boyfriend meet i don't remember if you ever mentioned it or if i just don't remember Okay, sorry about that. I did not mean to miss that. Um, Forrest and I met, and I did talk about it on one stream and then a few times on Tumblr, but it's funny, so I don't mind retelling it. Uh, I used to post TikToks a lot more than I do now, and more than just art. I was trying to be a TikTok funny guy, and it, it did work, sort of. I would say that I gained a little bit of an audience before I started posting art. Uh, one of those people was Forrest, who stumbled upon a video that I made that was a thirst trap to Megan the Stallion mashed up with mashed up with Bring Me the Horizon and the thirst trap was of a Karl Marx puppet that I had uh you know father of communism Karl Marx and so I posted that he saw it and thought it was funny and then he saw a second video that I had made that was me making dick shaped cookies chip dick shaped snickerdoodles and calling them dicker doodles and that was what made him decide to follow and why we are dating today tale as old as time yeah it was it was funny the wet harbor oh wait i did see these i like the crispy harbor <laughs> well so it, and there's a little more than that there's a little more than just like the the tiktoks right like we started talking because of those TikToks. He started coming to my streams because at the time I was still doing game streams and still streaming pretty consistently. And I was streaming Night in the Woods. And at one point while playing Night in the Woods, I brought up the fact that the games were based off of rural, rural PA and that like living in rural PA sucked because we, I was like, yeah, I've lived here my whole life and this game is very accurate. And he said... Oh, I live, I've lived in, I live in rural PA too, and it sucks. And I was just sitting there like, hello, this is the person that I've been talking to that I thought was cute from TikTok and you live like where I live. So I ended stream like almost instantly after that. Uh, and it was probably about an hour early, but I wanted to talk to him more. So I just was like, okay, bye guys. 
And then we started talking. We were talking about wanting to move out and wanting to find roommates. And so we were like, hey, we should hang out because we have a lot in common and we might make good roommates. And then one thing led to another. And then it wasn't just, hey, we should hang out as roommates. We should hang out as more than roommates. And now we're dating. And it's been like three years. Actually, I think it it has been three years. Our anniversary was like a month ago. Uh, it was a little under a month ago because it's the 8th. Yeah. No, no, that's my dad's birthday. I don't think our anniversary is the 8th because you said you didn't want it to be the 8th for certain reasons. Oh, yeah. No, it was like, it's mid-January. Yeah, but it was, so we are now officially three years because I was, I didn't want to like say it prematurely. This is cute. I'm legit trying not to tear up. <laughs> we we never even got to be roommates, guys. We were We were like, we were going to be roommates and then... Like, at one point, I was like, okay, wait, now that I know that he's single and also possibly could be interested in dating, I was like, hey, just to be clear, and it's okay if this is not the case, but I mean, I was interested, like, romantically, but if you did just want to be friends, I also am always happy to make... That's kind of like my bisexual superpower, is that, like, I will flirt with people, but if they don't want to be anything romantic, I also don't... I don't want to date people who I wouldn't want to be friends with. So I'm like, okay, it's cool. Like, I just have another friend then. And so my friend group just slowly becomes formed of people that either I was going to ask out and then just decided, nah, I like you better as a friend. Or, like, people that asked me out and I was like, do you mind if we just stay friends? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and it's fun doing that. But now I don't do that anymore. Now I just have friend friends. Well, and the other thing is, too, with our anniversary is that there was no, like... Most people, when they talk about anniversaries, they're like, oh, so we've been dating. Do you want to be my romantic partner? But for us, it was just like, um, I don't know when this exactly evolved into more than us dating. So our first date was mid-January. Yeah. To be fair, we had been talking for a while. And also, I, I don't want to say I don't just date people, but like, I don't know. Because dates are important, right? Like, I think we needed to have a first few dates. But, like, when I was dating you, I wasn't planning on going anywhere. I wasn't, like, going to dip if it didn't work out because I already liked you. And I mm. liked you for a while. Whereas I did go on some dates before we, like, started. And the peop I think I went on, like, one or two dates with, like, other people who, while, like, literally while I was on the date, I'm like, what am I doing? If I don't like them now, I don't think that anything new is going to happen that makes me like them later. Mm. They're nice, but they're just, I don't have any interest in that way. Whereas with you, I pretty much, like, instantly was interested in you and then was like, well, we'll see what happens. And it happened, so it worked out. Yeah. The opposite of being, the pain of being demi-romantic, demi the opposite happens. I, honestly, I think I got, before we started dating, in my high school friend group, I had mostly the opposite happen, so it it does sometimes line up that way. Although, my high school friend group was kind of formed unwittingly. Well, not true. I had my one best friend and a few people that were, like, pretty chill. Like, e EB, if you're here, you were always one of the real ones, but if you're not here, you still are. <laughs> um... It's a wholesome story. Thank you. If you don't have a friend group, you get stuck with in a weird limbo. Yeah, that was high school. Like, where it was kind of like the people that you were friends with or like that you hung out with were like, you might not actually admire them very much as people or enjoy speaking to them, but it's like, you know, who else are you going to talk to? That was kind of how it was for me. No one horrible, you're evil or bad. And there were even some people that wound up being better friends than I expected. But like, also, I didn't have a whole bunch in common with a lot of them. Demi Repulsion. I have to make sure that there is still music playing. You shamed me for my water bottle hitting my microphone and made me sad. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. You sound it's like you sound like a disappointed father. You're like, it did. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry. My water bottle is kind of like a force of destruction in our house, and I don't mean it to be, but it's like a giant steel water bottle that I drop constantly. And it's not it's not on purpose. I just am really clumsy and I like my water cold. But 
feel bad because I think I scare you with it sometimes. You do scare me. I don't mean to. It's very loud. I'm sorry. It's like a gong. I didn't realize what a crush felt like until I was like 18 and I was like, oh, yeah, no, that's actually real. Um, only now do I really understand myself in the sense that I was in a boy's friend group because I wasn't really a boy nor attracted to people in high school. It was an experience. Interesting. Need a water bottle because my cats threw it off the table all the time. And then Mossy Molly, found your art through your chameleon comic with what? Eh, around when that was being made, rather than like a first. I tend to hear all these character names I don't know. Are most mentions context of them on Ko-Fi, or are there somewhat- Ooh, okay. So, Laika's Comet is on Tumblr to read. Like, you can read it on Tumblr. I started posting the work on it um, on Tumblr and Twitter before it started being like uploaded officially, but there are two really good places to read the comic. If you want to read the comic on Tumblr, you should go to the at like as comet Tumblr and I'll like write it out just so it's easier. Does it have a little dash thing or no? No, there's no dash. It's just the word like as comet. Um, and if you don't like reading it on Tumblr, because by on Tumblr it's like page by page, you can read it on Webtoons. But if you're looking it up on Webtoons, it's like this with the apostrophe. And then there is a space in between it. Webtoons, it'll go episode by episode. And the Webtoons is usually like a month behind uh, the Tumblr. But that's just because it gets like mass uploaded at the end of the month. Um, so if you're more patient and you don't mind waiting, Webtoons is good because you can just chunk read it. But Tumblr, if you like getting the page by page, I wanted to give people the option. Um, but I didn't want it to be like unfair for the page by page readers either. So they get they get stuff a little ahead of time, uh, just because they get the they get fed the little crumbs bit by bit. There's also Comic Fury. Uh I there's only like a hundred something people here, so I can reveal this. The reason that I don't advertise the fact that there's... Oh, I mean, there's ones that haven't shown up in the comic. Yeah, the ones that haven't shown up in the comic yet have just been posted in art. Um, the only characters that are in Laika's Comet right now are UA, Laika, and Mars. And technically... So Turnip's also there. Turnip is the little old lady who's the dog. But I realize that not everyone knows her name because it wasn't said. Um, and then there's a little Mars... And then there's like a... And then the fifth character that technically has been revealed is the radio host, who we will meet later, but for right now, they're just a radio. Boombox. Let's see. I recently found out... Oh, okay, so I was saying in the comic theory. Wait, the character... Okay, wait. Dylan Active, I will answer that question in a second, but... Uh, real quick, the Comic Fury, the reason that I don't advertise it is because, uh, I got a comment right at the beginning of starting my comic that made me kind of insecure. Uh, someone basically implied that, like, the only reason that Laika's was getting any success is because I had a following to begin with, and while I kind of responded kind of, like, jokingly to them because I don't like letting it show that stuff gets under my skin because that's just a way to invite more heckling. Um, I did have that as an insecurity for a while, that like the only reason that the comic was getting any traction is because people already knew who I was and they already knew they liked my art, so they were willing to give it a shot that they might not have given something that they'd never heard of before. So I wanted to post like us to Webtoons and Tumblr already, and I had talked about doing that, but what I did on the side was someone recommended Comic Fury. I think it was actually Lemmy Frog Croaks. And so I started posting it on Comic Fury, like kind of quietly unannounced, because I wanted to prove to myself that like, even though I had a following on other accounts, Comic Fury with no advertisement and no like traction at all, I wanted, I, like, I wanted to experiment. I wanted to see if in a enclosed environment like as Comet would be successful. And so it has, like, I there are definitely quite a few readers on the Comic Fury side of things. And more than that, the people on Comic Fury leave wonderful comments. Like, they are usually the strongest of the theorists of everyone. Um, <clears throat> someone caught 
like way back when we were starting uh, the chapter, someone picked up on the fact that the astronaut in the sky was probably going to be related to Laika somehow. Um, like before we even saw the design for Rover, and because that crowd doesn't have access to any of the art outside the website, I was just really pleased with how like attentive they all were to stuff which while i might find it obvious i need to know from my audience themselves what is landing and what isn't so seeing someone get that like kind of in a vacuum was awesome um but that's why i don't pin comic fury anywhere because i really want to let the audience there grow naturally and like organically i don't want to have any influence on it at all whatsoever i want it to happen within comic fury's ecosystem itself <clears throat> It's late over here, so I'm ahead out for bed. The stream was really fun. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Jasper. I think I saw a comment screenshot, and I was like, I know that UI. I'm also just insane and read comics on all platforms. I appreciate you for that. The doodles are covered up by your avatar. Oh no! Oh, I realized I just did that underneath my big fat head. <laughs> Chat, yeah. let Comic Fury's ecosystem stay sanitary as it will. Well, I was going to say, you guys are welcome to read it over on Comic Fury, too. But my only request would be, if you talk about the places that you read like as Comet, don't mention that one, because I want that to happen within the site itself. And don't forget the question. Yes, the character design question. Um, it was a bit general, so I that was the other one, why I was going to get to it later. Sorry if this is too broad a question, but how do you go about finding designing outfits for your characters? So, a little bit cheatsy and a little bit official. One, I typically put characters in outfits that I either wear or would like to wear myself. Um, because I find a huge part of character design is knowing, or at least like character outfit design, is knowing what the outfit feels like and knowing how it moves around. If I can't imagine moving in something, I probably won't put my character in it. And I don't need to own, like, a perfect one-for-one, one. like, I own a plaid skirt that's the exact length and pleat of the one that I put my characters in. But I do try to know what those outfit pieces would feel like, because in order, like, to do that, it gives you an idea of how that character would have to move around. Like, if you're putting someone in a micro skirt, they're probably not going to be doing jump kicks unless you're really using, like the cartoon forgiveness of like you know i'm looking for a better word than panty shots because that's like it sounds lame but like that's basically what it is right like there is some clothing that would just not work for what you're trying to do unless you rely heavily on cartoon action and fantasy to carry something not being shown if you don't want it to be um and then two i just like fashion. Like, I spend a lot of time looking at clothes, uh, both for myself and my characters. I don't look at clothes, like, I'm not going and searching, like, XYZ style. I just see something and I'm like, that's cool. I want to find more like this and then go down the image rabbit hole, either on Pinterest or, like, uh, TikTok, Instagram, the like. And sometimes, what do I use to find clothing? Usually Pinterest. Usually Pinterest or TikTok. Like, I'll say, um, more of the time, the outfit for a character comes before the character, or like the general look the character is going to have comes first. Um, or, or what I'll have is like, I'll have an idea for a character where I'll be like, okay, I want to design like a gothic Lalita character. And then the personality and everything evolves into that. But first I think about like, who is this person? Why would they dress this way? Like, what does their day-to-day -day life look like that allows them to dress this way? And that kind of, like, and also what themes they have that would influence their design. Because that's a huge one, is, like, a character's themes and, like, what they're, what they're drawn to or what builds them as a person, so to speak, that will influence what they wear, too. But those things kind of come all at once, all together for me. Like, I don't have a a building process where I'm like, no, this character wouldn't wear, like, 
disco wear they would actually wear like punk wear the style is pretty much decided from the beginning but the specific pieces are what's designed me trying to figure out clothing for my eight foot two inch persona hello tall custom made tailored then it doesn't matter <laughs> i mean yeah basically um also too that like finding clothes doesn't mean you have to draw it to the proportions or like the shape of the model that's wearing them i think i see a lot of people say like they struggle to find f clothing for uh f like fat people or for like different body types and while looking for clothing to wear yourself that completely makes sense I always want to remind people that, like, just because the model you see isn't the body type that you're looking for doesn't mean you can't draw the body type in those clothes. It's just a matter of understanding the anatomy underneath the clothes and then thinking about the way that that body would affect what they're wearing. And while, like, that is definitely easier said than done, and I know people need to use references for some things, uh, I would encourage people to have a better grasp on the nude form of a character before you start to try to clothe them because then you really can swap out their wardrobe for whatever because you don't need a reference every time you change their clothes like Leica's body part of the reason that i kept her clothes more <coughs> form-fitting for her initial outfit is because i wanted to know what her body looked like without anything flowing or like concealing and then I could put her in winter wear, in a flowy dress, in overalls, in coveralls, or like beach wear. Like all of those things came after knowing what she looked like without that outfit, if that makes sense. And then Mars, I hate to say Mars was not difficult, but Mars is just kind of how I draw baby kitty furries. So like they're like seven, that wasn't really hard. <clears throat> Wise as hell. Me writing this all down. Have you ever done a face reveal before? I have. Every every so often I post a selfie on Tumblr for like five minutes and then I immediately delete it. Might want to fix your schedule on Twitch profile by the way. It still says Sunday. Hello? Yeah, that was one of the original days you wanted to stream. We can always fix that later. Hello? Thank you for the notification. I did not realize that. Sylveon's tail is so bushy here. I think Sylveon should have a bushier tail. I think it should look like a little feather. I tried to kiss Harbor on his precious little head and he gave me this stink eye. Aww. Like he backed away from me and his mouth was slightly open and his Fleming. eyes were squinted and I'm just like, what did I do? All I did was try to love you. Sometimes he doesn't want the love. He's like, that's too much love. I'm I'm over, I'm stuffed, I'm suffocated. He says as he's loafed in my arms. Yeah, well that's good enough for him. That's all he wants. He just wants to be held. You ever seen Maine Wolf's legs? Oh yeah, I like Maine Wolves, they're cool. How did you guys think of the names for your cats? They're so nice. Harbor we didn't actually name. Uh, that was just his name that we got him with. And then Pluto was because Mars... I was thinking of naming Pluto Mars, and then Forrest was like, I don't want to name Pluto after your character, because what if the char what if Pluto's nothing like the character Mars? Which is funny, because I would argue that Pluto is like Mars. But the other reason for it is that we already have a friend with a black cat who's named it Mars, and I didn't realize that when I was making my character Mars. So I was like, ooh, yeah, you're right. She might think we're copying her, and that would be kind of weird. So we named him Pluto because it's another planet name, and it it was just, it just kind of worked out. <laughs> oh, so now he loafs, just not when he's annoying on your stream, Forrest. Yeah, no, he only bothers Forrest, not, not me. He's fine with me streaming, but Forrest streams, and it's like nuclear meltdown happens. He needs attention right now. He won't even sit on my lap. Like, I go to put him on my lap, but I guess that's not enough for him. Yeah. Like, he has to be cuddled. He gets needy. He really- well, and Forrest is his favorite, so if he's not paying enough attention to him, he gets upset. He is fine with just chilling in a room with me, and I think because I'm too clingy, he gets mad when I, like, try to kiss him or, like, hold him too much, but Forrest he always wants attention from. And I don't mind it. I love- and Har Harbor is sweet with me. Like, he'll snap on my chest, too. I don't want to make it sound like he doesn't like me. He sleeps on my head. 
Yeah, he just is different with Forest. Suffocates. Oh, I can delete the little handles now. Oh no, or can I? Actually, that might be where I call it, just because it's almost 10 o'clock. I actually went three hours, holy crap. I did not mean to do three. Thank you for the lineup brush compliment. Oh, but what I do want to do is I want to find someone to raid, because I did that last time, it was very fun. Uh... Sorry, I'm gonna check someone else to see. Oh, but they have pre-rolls. Wait, I think we raided this person before. I think I know them. No. I've raided them before. And you like them, right? They do Splatoon and artwork and stuff. Yes, I think I follow them too. Okay, would you guys like to go raid someone that's doing Splatoon? Why are you drowning me? I'm drinking! Mm. I don't know if they're doing Splatoon right now, I just know that like sometimes they do Splatoon art. Also, I know I have pre-rolls, but I'm trying to figure out how to turn those off. I'm sorry. I don't like pre-roll ads. I wouldn't want them on my own stream either. I'm just still tinkering. I might like art, and I might enjoy streaming, but I'm not the brightest bulb when it comes to it. Do you ever got anxious about what you post online or what you posted? Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah, Tenevers, I don't want- like, I can go more into it the next stream, but, like, dealing with- internet anxiety and like the attention that comes with it has been like a multiple year journey so to speak because i already had anxiety before i started posting online and it was just kind of like amplified by like 10 hundred when i started gaining an audience but it has been a gradual like set of choices and like things that led me here also, actually, I did say I was going to raid a Splatoon artist, but I just saw that Dog and Cafe is streaming, and I love them, so... I was about to ask if you if they were still streaming. I think they are. Hello? It says they are on here. Dog in a cafe. Oh, I got scared. I thought they died. Okay, 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 okay. We're just gonna we're gonna read Dog and Cafe. Um Yes, I love their comics too. I love them. They're we've been mutuals for a while and they make me very happy. Oh wait, I have to go back again. Wait, no, I don't. Um, so help. What's your so, idea? Click op You don't have the pop-up I do, but for now you can go here. You can go to your stream manager. Bye bye everyone and thank you that came. We are raiding, so if you stay around, we will be going to the next person, but... And I think you guys will like their art very much. There you go. Yeah, sure, Vol. Okay, now we're starting the raid. And it's gonna do... It'll tell you when it's ready. Yes. Thank you all for coming, love you very much, and I will see you on Thursday. Later, alligator. Nice.